Hey guys, so this is Woody the Unexceptional Gamer, and what I've done is I've taken some random games. These are not like handpicked, and uh, some of them are from the same night, some of them are from last night, and I'm using them as a backdrop to Painkiller already, in hopes of making the podcast a little more entertaining to, uh, to sit through. So I hope that you like it, and uh, understand these aren't the cherry pick games that you're used to seeing on my channel. So if you give me a hard time, I'm going back to pictures. That's the deal. Have a good night. What's up, everybody? It's Painkiller already, episode uh, 37, I'm guessing. You know, yeah, <laughs> if we write, right. it's thirty-seven. Yeah, and we have um, we have Seamus. the world's yeah, Seamus, <laughs> Seamus. Hi, this Seamus. is Seamus. Seamus. Keep also going, known huh? as, keep going, keep going. Also known as stock puppet to FPS Kyle, apparently. Oh my god! Yeah, I'm never let that down, man. Now. You were the you were the intro man. I'm digging it. Yeah, that's a pretty weak <laughs> intro. I think it's because he just woke up, though. All right, Kyle wanted to talk good. about the congresswoman that got shot. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I mentioned right before we started that I wanted to talk about that, the poor yeah. congresswoman who got shot. Um, let's, let's all just, uh, whether you're religious or not, let's say a silent prayer for her and hope that she pulls through. Yeah. All right, moving on. All right, so Sarah Palin's been getting all this heat for putting, um, <laughs> it's funny, she put... Uh, she put what looked like reticles over like different congressional districts on this uh, thing on her website and said, you know, let's target these Democrats and aim for success or something along those lines. <laughs> and uh, they yes. interviewed her recently, and she's like, they were surveyor symbols. I'm not sure what you're talking about. <laughs> it's like, are you I have no me? idea what those were. <laughs> that's, like me, that's like me using my rifle scope as a pair of binoculars. <laughs> hey, I do that all the time. It's that giant crosshair in the middle. I don't know. Dude, here's here's what I'd like to do as a little social experiment. I would like to take Sarah Palin and have her gain 50 pounds and see if she's still relevant on the national political scene. I'd like <laughs> yeah. I, I got another social experiment. I'd like to take Obama and uh, and have him be white and see if he's still relevant on the social scene. Um, you know, Sarah Palin, if she wasn't like a MILF, she wouldn't even be on TV. No, I'm like, it's absolutely seriously. true. On the Barack no, Obama she would thing, not. I'm kind of curious. Like, it, it, clearly, <laughs> it's helped him uh, get out the black vote, right? That that's uh, we, they had higher levels of participation in that election, and that was good. On the other hand, it's something that he has to overcome with a large, with a big chunk of other voters. So yeah, you see, I don't know. You see Obama it's, getting a head full of gray now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yo, oh it's gosh. hard on him, dude. That job ages you. Everybody gets so old so fast. Um, and age Bush. Say, oh, oh, Bush, the, the, Bush went on vacation <laughs> when he was yeah, running. He was on. They was gone. <laughs> fool. When they were when he was running for president, some guys were saying that if, if he didn't have that funny name Barack Obama, then he would not be as uh, relevant on the political scene. And it was like, no way, that is just crazy talk. That name is definitely something that he's overcome. He he has a freaking Arab name, you know, and he's running for politics in the current climate, especially from a few years ago. Uh, that that didn't help him at all. As far as being black. I don't know. I don't know. Like I can see how it helps him in some sectors and hurts him. Oh, I don't know. I think you it helps know the black people sleep. around here, <laughs> down here in the south. I remember people rallying together. We gotta vote for Obama. Why you gotta vote for Obama? Cause he's black. Did you see his inauguration? Did you see his speech? Did you watch him on a Dateline the other night? No. <laughs> Come on, man. But you know, no, group, I saw them interviewing of people, people who, where he can do no, no right because he's black. Oh, that's yeah. a very small majority of people. That's yeah, I think that's majority? a very, uh, excuse <laughs> right. my I like oxymoron. Excuse as, me, minority. Okay. Walk into a room, buddy, and go raise your hand if you're racist. That's not something people like throw out there. Like, yeah, me right here. You, you might get one or two rednecks to do that, but for the most part, out of thirty people, you probably won't get any hands. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, there'll be very few. When, if if I'm voting for a candidate, I'm looking for someone who uh, who feels the way I do about key issues, and like I could not care less if they're white or black. I don't agree with a lot of things that Colin, a lot of Colin Powell's uh, views on issues, but I would have no problem voting for him for president if he did, in fact, agree with some of my with my feelings on some issues. I have no problem with a black president or female president for that matter, as long as they've got a good head on their shoulders. They they're able to speak publicly. Well, that's the biggest failure on George Bush's part, in my opinion, is he did, he could not get yeah. his opinion over to, to anybody else because he was he's just an I'm a better public speaker than George Bush. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I, think I saw we, I Sarah think all Palin. She was ripping on Barack Obama for only being able to speak in front of a teleprompter like that was a 
a rallying cry from the right for some time. Like, you know, oh, this idiot, he's not even a good speaker. He only uh, sits in front of a teleprompter. But what was funny about Sarah Palin is you could see her teleprompter in the reflection of her glasses <laughs> as she was ripping on him. Yeah, People will you nitpick know, the stupidest crap for no reason. Dude, Sarah Palin is stupid as shit. She does not deserve <laughs> any kind of office on the face of this earth. She should be in front of a kitchen sink fucking plucking chicken feathers out. That's what she should be doing. I've watched Did you that. Was, Did you see where she was at that uh, massacre or whatever? It wasn't a massacre. They were uh, killing chickens in the background. Yeah, it was Thanksgiving, was, bro. Oh, was, yeah. Oh, it was, it was a turkey. turkey in the background. That was... <laughs> I'll Matthew Sharp is a marvel. Here's my him. no no look here's my here's my feelings about about Sarah Palin. I don't think I don't think I know enough about her to form an opinion yet. From what I've seen, she seems dumb a lot of the times. I'm not gonna lie, she, she does. is dumb. I'm gonna no. Just look, <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 sharing an honest opinion that does not. No no agree. no. I'm giving you an honest opinion. I'm giving you a fact. She is You've never dumb met her. As shit. Don't know. I, I've, never, I've met never met her. I've I've listened to her talk on TV many a times, and I could pretty much formulate that. If you see old Bubba on the TV talking about how he eats a ham hamburger sandwiches with mustard on the bun, and you know likes to uh, hunt deer, you can pretty much tell old Bubba ain't reading Shakespeare in his free time. I don't think you I'm have to read Shakespeare say- to be intelligent, though. I'm just saying this. I've watched the, I, I watched like two episodes of her reality show. Now she seems like a really nice person. I'll say that. Other than that, I saw her one time. I don't want a, I don't want a nice person in office. I want somebody that can go up to fucking Vladimir Putin and slap him in the face if it needs to be happening. Do you think that's I need Obama? somebody to get shit done? No, that ain't Obama. I voted McCain. Thank you. I, and you know what? I'll say that McCain is he's a little bit liberal for me, to be honest. Like I say what you want about Bush, okay? As far as his policies, his personal behavior, him doing coke when he was younger, whatever. But he took a fucking hard line stance with anybody and everybody outside this country. Wouldn't you at least agree with that? Yeah, I mean, I ain't, I ain't down in Bush for that. I'm down in Bush for fucking destroying the economy. Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> so destroying the economy is, is kind of an issue that's worth looking at. And is that hard line stance was idiotic in many cases. But why didn't he attack Canada instead of Iraq? Could have Fallout 3 them and just fucking annexed because, them. Because the British... Not, because the British... Brown. But look no, here. because the British intelligence <laughs> and the American intelligence didn't didn't both agree that this guy was seeking uh, materials for weapons of mass destruction, and because the Can- Canadians have never gassed their own people, as far as I know, unless they got some kind of maple syrup gas, I'm not aware Dude, of. So here's the reason we <laughs> cherry picked. They ignored all. They, I remember Hans Blix, right? They called him a bureaucrat, as if that was the worst insult that you could possibly give to a man. And they said, "Yo, the reason he hasn't found these weapons of mass destruction is that he's just an ineffective bureaucrat." They said that again and again and again. And Hans Blix was like, you're not going to find it either. It's not there. I've been looking for this for a decade, and we've been all over the place. They're cooperating with me. It's not there. That's the deal. And they're like, oh, no, no, we've got all this intelligence that it is there. Nonsense. It wasn't there. It's still not there. Anyone who thinks that they went into that with the weapons of mass destruction as their primary motive is insane. I'll tell you why. Let me ask you, please. Let me me tell you why we invaded Iraq. I mean, we had this little cherry top store, but the reason we did it is because uh, Saddam was about to switch his oil reserves over to the euro instead of the dollar. That would have knocked our gas prices through the fucking roof. All right, if that if all of that is true, can we all? Let me ask you this: I don't I don't have in front of me the exact square mileage of Iraq, but it's a big fucking place, and it's mostly a desert. Wouldn't you agree? And I'm not saying that there are. I don't know. I don't know, and it seems very doubtful that there that there have been weapons of mass destruction there for the last twenty years. But wouldn't you at least agree that if he did in fact have weapons of mass destruction, that he could have hidden them from us? Yeah. I'm not saying he did, but if if it were you, if I put you in charge of Iraq and I gave you, you know, uh, you know, a couple hundred. Uh, rockets with uh, with some VX gas. Yeah, but said, see, hey, Kyle, Kyle, this well, this, this, this is what you're feeding into. You're feeding into it because look, like, yeah. well, maybe he could have hid weapons, but he didn't, dude. He I'll, didn't do it. I'll answer your question with a question. If there's a murder case, if there's a capital punishment case where they're going to decide if someone's guilty or not, why would something like that? The burden of proof is so much higher for a single murder, for a single capital punishment proof, than it was for weapons of mass destruction. They didn't have a shred of evidence. They had nothing. All they had were these hunches. They had some forged papers with people who were trying to get in good with the U.S. They had they had bupkis, and they knew the the uh, intelligence was bad, but they wanted it to be good. They wanted to believe, so they ran with it. 
Okay, it fair is enough. wrong for the standard of for the uh, is it called the standard of burden? The, the um, a lot of people say we invaded for oil. We have never taken. Where is this oil coming from? <laughs> no, like, we, didn't, yeah. we didn't invade for oil. We invaded to keep the oil at the dollar. Let me just say this: if we invaded for oil, where is it fucking at? If we invaded <laughs> for oil, then, then, no, no, no. It, See, look here. If Saddam would have switched over to the euro, the euro is worth what? Somebody give me a number. I know it's worth cause almost like I think forty, it's like 50 one and a half times. Dollar. It's like one yeah, and something half. like that. Yeah. Like fifty percent. That, 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 that increase would have jumped right up on the gas pumps. And at that time, gas was already $3. If you would have seen gas jump to $4 on something, you, you, you would have had a crisis here in America. That one summer, it was $4 where I live. It got to like $4.30. Yeah. But look at it this way, Kyle. If he had weapons of mass destruction and you see the United States Army bearing down on your main city, wouldn't that be the time to use them if you have them? Well, I don't. I'm, I don't put anything past that guy. Let me. Let's look at this. I don't know if many people know about this. Uh, uh, let me, let's look at it this way. All right. Let's go hide in a hole, Saddam, or let's nuke the American troops. Okay. Fair enough. Then all right. Then maybe he didn't have them. I'm, I'm not saying he did. It looks like he didn't. For for like 99 percent sure that he did not have them. Like I'm not. I'm not trying to throw some kind of conspiracy. We ba- we basically did what the Nazi Germany did to Poland, dude. We just invaded them and we just had a good enough excuse that people would buy it with a shitty grin because people don't want to disagree with us. I think the main goal in that in in my opinion was to get rid of Saddam and replace him with anything and everything that would be better than him because he was given a choice at one point. Leave the country, take your family, take a billion dollars with you. Jordan will take you and they said, Yeah, we'll take him. Just leave. And he wouldn't do it. And, and when you look at that decision on Saddam's part from not leaving, like I'm dumbfounded because whatever you want to say about how, our actions or why we did it or whether it was right or wrong, why wouldn't he leave? Because he didn't, he didn't foresee the United States actually invading him. Well, you, I think we all knew. When you saw Bush because, on TV because and he when was he, like when, laying when, the hammer down, he was serious. He meant business. Yeah, but, but look at it this way. I would look at it the same way. I'm like, this, I, I don't have mad weapons of mass destruction. I have no reason for this guy to invade me. Who, who would have foreseen he'd make up a bullshit reason? That's like you on trial for murder, and you know you didn't do it. You have an alibi you didn't do it. You don't expect to go to the death chamber. You kind of see my point? Maybe so, but I knew he was going in, and everybody else knew he was going in. Because once you've said you're going in, you, you have to. You can't lose that kind of face. But, uh, but regardless of whether it was right or wrong, the whole thing, I think that uh, him being dead is a good thing. And yeah, it he, may have destabil- destabilized the region, but I think in, 20, the, I think if in an alternate reality where we didn't take him out 20 years from now would have been worse off than the 20 years from our current reality right, because right. that, that guy was a we're murder not, in the fucker. We're not supposed to talk ready. about stuff upstream, but somebody just said that Saddam killed mass amount of people. I'm pretty sure Obama has already killed mass amount of people. The decisions you make in office is is catastrophic to the decisions you make when you're grocery shopping. I mean, you got to look at the things. you got to look at people as a statistic instead of an actual person. That's the way businesses are run. Bro, and but he gassed his own people. So yeah, he, what? He definitely they were, didn't they were like trying to overthrow people. the government, though, right? Like, yes. this is going to be crazy. I'm going to get so much hate for this. But by that measure, Abraham Lincoln is equally bad. Maybe worse. I, I yeah. think Abraham Lincoln was a terrible president. I was thinking How the other day. You. How about <laughs> oh, this? Boy. How about this? Let's look at this. Who? Just everybody go around quickly. Who do you think was the best American president of all time? Theodore Roosevelt. Good one. That's in my top three. I usually pick Lincoln for that. I don't think Lincoln, because I think Lincoln let things get out of hand. I think uh, a better president would have stopped the war preemptively. Hmm. They usually blame the president before him for that. <laughs> what the fuck is yeah. saying George Washington? I, I, got, I, got, I got a feeling that George Washington is the only president they can name. <laughs> um, I'm, my favorite is George Washington, and I'll tell you why. George Washington... Uh, not only was he General Washington beforehand, he lost a lot of battles, but he won a lot of them, and he saved the, the city of Philadelphia. But the thing about Washington, he was given the choice. He didn't want to be president, first of all. They had to talk him into it. And he, rece- he, he received one of the highest, I think it's the highest uh, percentage of the vote. Of course, he was the first, so that's easy, easily done. But they offered to extend his presidency indefinitely, and he said no. And that was only after... They told him, well, let's just forget about this whole president thing. You could be King Washington. You could be King George Washington. And he said, no. We were going to pick him for the same reason. Yeah, after two terms, he he turned it down, and that that, um, did a good thing for the nation. Hey, let's get off politics. All right. That'd be fine. I have a um, 
a message on my YouTube channel. So people write me for advice, and uh, I think it, part of the deal is I have this fatherly thing going on. So I, like, I, I haven't seen your guys, I haven't seen your guys' messages. I think my grammar's awful, but uh, I get a lot of them that have some pretty serious subjects. And uh, here, I'll read this the best I can. It's it's one long paragraph. You guys ready? I am ready. The title is Dealing with Divorce. So um, here we go. Uh, Hey, so I've noticed that you reply to messages with people asking for help, so here I am. I don't feel comfortable talking about it to anyone else, so here it goes. First off, I have a sister that's older than me. I'm 15, she's 18. So three days ago, I heard a lot of arguing, and an hour and a half later, I learned that my mom was divorcing my father. He's had alcohol and drug problems for many years in caps. And about three months ago, he went to go get help. And it seemed really good for about two months, but lately he's been drinking again. No drugs, though. Now, I know this sounds bad, but he's had an extremely traumatic life from father issues to depression and drugs were his release. My mom is also an alcoholic, but refuses to believe it. They're not crazy alcoholics, like they're not beating us or anything. They just get aggravated and a little crazy when they're drunk. They've changed who he is, but I'm still in love with him a lot. Now, I know they're getting into a divorce. My parents are kind of fighting over me. My sister, not so much, because she'll be going to college soon anyways. They've both been trying to get me to support their side a lot lately, and I can't deal with that emotionally. My dad still loves my mom very much and is horribly upset about this, openly crying to me and my sister. Something unspeakable, if you knew my dad. So he doesn't have to deal with the emotional trauma. He decided to move to California very soon. I've been spending as much time with him as possible before he leaves, but I'm still having a tough time dealing with this. So I wanted to know if you had any tips about the divorce for a dad or my dad leaving. I know this is kind of vague with school in this, but I've been extremely stressed and on edge lately. I've gotten close to no sleep, and I really need some advice. So what would you suggest I do as far as keeping my sanity during all of this? I want to make it out... Wait, I'm sorry. I want to make it out of this with the best possible relation with both my parents and keeping my sanity. For any advice you have, I really appreciate it, and I'm sorry for the long message. Wow. That was heavy. Uh, So, I don't know... Convince your dad to walk away... It's easy for the man to get over the loss of a child than it is for a woman, and no court system in the world is going to give a man custody of a child if the woman is uh, any any kind of like natural being or parenthood. The easiest way is to give the woman all the ch- children and just get the man to have um you know rights to see them. Yeah, only time they really split it up is if uh, the mom has some terrible drug problem and the dad's fine. It's usually the only time they'll do it. Yeah, so I don't know about other states, but. Um just recently, I've had two co workers. It's funny. When you're 20, all your friends get married. When you're like late 30s, all your friends get divorced. <laughs> so um, I've had two friends recently go through a divorce, and their custody deal you know, wasn't too bad. Like that, One of them has his kids six out of every 14 days. So that's oh, it's almost half, right? Seven would have been half. And um, the other one has them like five out of every 14 days or something like that. See, so, I, uh, I I don't like that arrangement at all because that that fucks the kid up because he, he yeah. doesn't know what's stable. You is. know what they did in in one case? Uh, it was pretty interesting. It's called nesting. So uh, the kids stayed in one place and the parents swapped out. So, uh, so wow, yeah. that's mm-hmm. really they, odd. That, that just ended because they sold the house, but uh, oh. It went on for like almost two years. They the the kid stayed right there, and the the you know different parent would would move in and do their thing. So uh, it was kind of awkward because like in your house are all these little remnants and clues about your life, whether they be you know bills or clothing or like I don't know schedules, and uh, you know so now you're kind of split. You're not apart anymore, but there's these hints of what your partner is doing that you know. I, it was kind of awkward for him, but uh, yeah. But we should get back on topic. So here's a yeah. fellow where his dad, and it, it seems like both his mom have uh, a touch of drug issues, and uh, they're getting divorced, and the dad's moving away to California, and he's, wow, I, I don't have any advice for this guy. Other, you know, what do you say? Maximize your time with your father's while, while with your father while he's here. Um, yeah, I didn't uh, have. I, I, did, I, I don't even know my dad. And I, I came out great. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that um, that kids who are divorced often do is they get like a, you know that their parents agree that them having a cell phone is important, so they can get uh, like you know access anytime, any day to their parents. I think when it comes to a situation like that, it's just a lot harder to give advice if you've never been in that situation yourself. 
Yeah, I, I don't ever plan on being a father or have a, a kid lynching onto my leg, so this is hard advice to give. This is right, a yeah, good question. You're asking the, <laughs> I, one thing about the the questions that we get. You got to keep in mind, Wings and I are 24 years old. How old are you, Seamus? I'm 22. So yeah, Wings, Wings, myself, and Seamus are all way too young to be giving this give any advice. Woody's probably your best bet, and Woody's clueless. So. <laughs> Good luck, my friend. I'm sorry life is hard, and I'm sure you'll per- persevere through it. And you might want to ask a grandparent or some kind of, uh, I don't know, school I mean, counselor or something. Let me ask this. Can the father come out of the home and the mother get the full custody and they still be friends enough that, so if the father wants to take him to a ball game or something, he can come by, pick him up, take him? I mean, that that's the best case scenario you're going to run into. Have the mother and the father stay friends. They just no longer fuck. Well, usually people's pride kind of gets in the way of that. They don't want to deal with someone they've had problems with. So generally when there's a divorce, they don't even want to talk anymore. But I still talk to my ex-girlfriend. Fuck it. Why not? But I'm hoping that the 18-year-old sister is somehow emotionally scarred by this and she lives near me. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so you can so, uh, help topic. out. <laughs> <laughs> so did, did, let, just wrap this one up, perhaps, is... um. Uh, what I what I've seen with parents is they uh, they do it the best job they can at keeping the traumatic stuff away from the kids, right? You know, they they don't badmouth each other in front of the kids. They do that fairly well. They they agree on the schedules and things like that. But it's kind of kept to a business like arrangement. You know, when pickups are going to happen, when transfers are going to be. Um, oftentimes with divorce, I didn't realize this. They put rules against who's allowed to move into the house. You know, like it, both my friends, for example, if they were to have serious girlfriends and, you know, get engaged and things like that, they can't live in the same house that the children live in until they're remarried. And uh, I was surprised to see that. But that's yeah. that's like a standard thing. So, yeah. But uh, how about this? Don't get married. Mar- marriage is so fucking like speaking of marriage. This is a new topic. I, I don't know if we've covered this before. Why do homosexuals want to get married? I don't know. Because if you think marriage is like a, a Christian Catholic kind of like ceremony, right? And their religion bashes their their ideology so badly. Like, why would you even put yourself in that religion to want to be married? Well, all right. So I guess you got to think that it's 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 sort of a. And somebody said that there are financial benefits, but you can get those same financial fi- benefits from a. Um, what is it? A, a shared union or whatever? A, there, you can get all the financial benefits of marriage in in other ways. I honestly don't understand why they want the tag of you know husband and husband or you know marriage per se. I don't get it. Maybe it's just that old thing. You know, if you can't have something you want it, doesn't I don't get it. But I don't want to get married. And if somebody I, said I, I couldn't get married, I wouldn't care. Yeah, here, like, Fuck, here, yeah. here's the thing. That's like um. That's like you wanting to be in a club, but the club. I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to the extremes here. Let's say you're a white guy and you want to be in the Black Panthers. All yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good analogy. I like where this is going. All right, uh, uh, wings is on a just, roll. Tell me, you're a white guy. You want to be in the Black Panther? That's the same way I see it as like a homosexual that wants to be in marriage. He might be. He might be brought up Christian or Roman Catholic or whatever. But the fact is, the religion itself basically cast out your kind. They do not want you. They do not need you. They do. They, they want you just to go and burn in hell. That's what, exactly what they want you to do. I remember, mean, I, I, remember, though, but... I remember seeing the Pope spit on a homosexual. What a I jerk. Mean, I mean, like, he came up here trying to get his blessing, and the Pope literally spit on him. It's John Paul. Does and that like, count as holy water or no? I, I don't think so. <laughs> see, see, <laughs> see, one thing... <laughs> I bless you, my son. <laughs> was awesome. He's loving this one. <laughs> no, but look, one thing that like I have an issue with, and I'm not, I'm not very religious myself. I'm, I don't know what I would define myself as. I guess it's the whole, the old saying: "There's no atheist in foxholes," and I, I would, I would kind of cling along to that uh, ideology. But it's pretty clear in the Bible that, that you know the whole homosexual thing. I mean, it's right in there with like bestiality and other things. Like that's the chapter it's in. I, I mean, it's like you know they're pretty serious about you know let's 
kill the gay people. And there's even a part where I remember like that, like some angels go into a city to talk to. They go into Sodom and Gomorrah. They go into one of the cities. The angels do, and some guys are hitting on the angels. So the angels like strike them all blind. So like, there's some pretty serious stuff against homosexuals in the Bible. So I have a little bit of an issue, even though I'm not part of. I'm not strongly religious myself, but whenever I see like a homosexual uh, priest or pastor or something like that, it just seems kind of odd to me. I don't get so, it. He's the white guy holding the Black Panther rallies, huh? Yeah, that's what I see it as. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's out there with his fist in the air, and he's like, no, it's not about not liking white people. It's about wanting to be a proud black man. And, and you're like, but you're not a proud black man. You're white as shit. I'm one sixteen so, black on my father's side, though. Just exactly. To be, just, to, just to be clear, so you're totally okay with gay couples getting all the other rights of getting married. It's just not. Of course, why not? I just don't understand why they want to get uh, be take part in a ceremony that that isn't against a religion that hates their ass. I'll tell you why. Because you know, it doesn't even have to be in a church. It could be in a town hall. If it's in a church, that's fine too. Like the notion that you know what we should really be giving gay people is separate but equal, I think is the racism of our day. I think that you know don't do that. Don't don't take this baby step. We've learned from it before. Just go ahead and start treating them like full fledged people. They're, they're they're regular couples. That's my take on the thing. Maybe I'm yeah, but the club that they want to join doesn't want them to be part of it. Look, yeah. you know, if you're arguing that the club they want to join has really stupid members in it, then <laughs> I'll, I'll grant you that. But I still would give them the membership that they're looking for. I don't think they should be ostracized. By yeah, but if, if you take that with a grain of salt, you got to take the rest of the Bible with a grain of salt as well. Because Dude, how can I you take bend the rules? Bible with some salt, <laughs> pepper, and salsa. I <laughs> mean, <laughs> some vinegar it's there like, too. This thou yeah. shall not kill. You know, well, he never had his wife cheat on him when he wrote this. You know, you got to let some shit slide. <laughs> no, I just I, I really I have think a new that, topic. Like, okay. Oh. So this one's another personal message sent to me, and um, oh sweet! Uh, here's one I think that you guys will do do better on. You ready? The subject is oh well. By the way, I don't um, name anyone on these things on purpose, right? Like a lot of these guys, they might not want to be uh, named. So anyway, the subject is I am being cyber bullied. Hey Woody, I know this is probably the most random message you've ever gotten. <laughs> not likely, but I'm sure you know what to do. But I'm not sure what to do. I love making YouTube videos, and it's my passion right now. I'm 17 and I'm a junior in high school. People from school have discovered my YouTube videos and constantly harass me about them. I, they think my videos are stupid. I've had to delete many comments where they say things about me. It's difficult to catch who it is because they make new accounts. Woody, I'm thinking about leaving my school. It's gotten to a level where I can't walk down the hallways. It's also gotten to the point where I want to quit YouTube just to make it stop. But I love this hobby. So let me know what I should do if you need I any got more it. information. I got it. So it's time, it's so. time to go Kojak on these motherfuckers. Here's what you yeah. need to do. Oh, you, no. need to, oh, you need to kind of associate some usernames with some actual people. And then what you do is you get to a camera. And then you catch them motherfuckers like picking their nose in the corner. And you put it on your YouTube. <laughs> then, you swing <laughs> all all the, <laughs> then you swing all the hate of you over to them. And then everybody loves you. It's like, you see Billy picking his nose on the YouTube? I'll you know, say when this, Wayne started, when you I didn't realize how brilliant his answer was going to be. I love that, man. <laughs> if you, <laughs> if you can catch good. these guys doing anything embarrassing, whether it be you know getting getting shot down by a girl's not embarrassing enough by my standards. But, uh, yeah, picking his nose would be great. Hell, you know, adjusting his underwear, I'm not sure. Falling but, up the uh, stairs. <laughs> falling up the stairs. That's tough to yeah. catch. But, uh, yeah, I, I like this idea. What else? Who's got something else? I get cyberbullied um, every day, though. Like comments, I get. Oh, you suck! Stop doing videos. Blah blah blah. It's yeah, but he's, got, he's, at a, he's at a different place. He goes to school, and his buddies at school know it, and they pick on him while he's at school. Oh, Getting just the, the nasty message, I get those all the fucking time. But well, if somebody was to come into my house and be like, huh, 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 "What's up, fat ass? I see you putting the video <laughs> up." <laughs> yeah, we don't eat exactly you and play video games. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we don't exactly have people coming into our uh, our place of uh, yeah, work. It wouldn't work out too well if anybody decides to do that either. You no. Know? <laughs> I don't think anybody's going to come to somebody's house and be like, dude, that golden AK video you made, that was really gay, man. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah let me see your back. <laughs> oh, maybe I show you the golden AK. How about one of the bullets from it? Yeah, have you seen my Remington video? <laughs> well, two years ago when I started making videos, like all of my actual friends made fun of me for it, and two years later, when I'm actually getting paid for it, it's not so fucking funny anymore to them. 
<laughs> I love that. <laughs> I'm like, hey guys, look what I got. What's that for? Oh, my dorky, nerdy YouTube shit. Oh, what a shock. It's just like those people that when you go to extracurricular activities after school and they make fun of you because of it, and then they comes when the resume comes around, their resume's like half a page long where you got three pages worth of shit. Where's What's that, your half a page resume? Well, I need fucking like a booklet to contain mine. <laughs> I mean, people are going to make fun of you because they're, they just want to hassle you. It's just like their goal in life. Yeah, I, I was on a, a pretty pretty good end of some uh, actual bullying by my friends when I started the videos, but it's not so, it's not so comical anymore. <laughs> yeah, so it's, I, um, I'm it's torn. That, a little part of me wants to I'm give torn? this guy... I'm torn with a T. <laughs> yeah. I wish it was a P. <laughs> um, oh, part of me wants to like shout out his channel and hope that he gets a bunch of subs and like have his school be like, "Who's your daddy now?" Another part of me knows that it's important to respect the anonymity of these guys. So, yeah, yeah but I look at it this way, Woody. If we shout him out, that's like your mother calling somebody else's mother to get you to go to the party. That's what I look at that. Hmm. Kind of understand what I'm going through. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I don't know. I think we should maybe have some kind of, uh, but it's impossible yeah, I, to do. I, I was going to say should, we have some kind of contest, and we could maybe shout somebody out every week based on actual merits rather than. I, I think we should do another phone call. We didn't do that last week. Like call yeah, somebody but, out of the blue. Well, I yes. don't know. The whole Fox XD thing kind of got some <laughs> negative reviews. Who yeah, cares? it gets some negative reviews. But um, I, I've been in the chat asking people to give me good reasons to call them, and uh, and uh, you know I want to grow a YouTube channel. We've already done that one. So um, I'm looking for uh, for somebody good. Uh, I'll let you know if I if, find someone. I, if your I mom's love here, it's Kyle. She needs to hit me up at uh, my email. So Here, here's what I want to see: if you're over the age of 30 and you run a <laughs> YouTube channel and it's struggling, I want to hear your thoughts on it. Anybody here feel that, Bill? Over the age of 30, that's yeah. going to eliminate like 99 percent of our audience. Uh huh. Yeah, uh -huh. See, see, we're only looking for one person to call, so it won't matter. If he's there, if he's there. <laughs> All right. All right. I just want to see Peter Jackson's his uncle. I'm sorry, go on. I I just want to I just want to see what a, a guy's perspective that's more mature and he uh, understands how to grow things, how he's taking, you know, wanting a channel to grow and that's not growing. He kind of Yeah. I don't I don't know if there's any 30-year-olds that really get into this like at this late <laughs> stage in the game. <laughs> I mean, Why bother, right? I mean, they'll be yeah, dead soon. Exactly. Like, yeah, I think that's so well, you know, like, like, anything at that age. I mean, I mean, if you're 30, 35 years old, you need to be cherishing every moment that you've got left. <laughs> you only have, what, like waste. 35 trust years me, left? Trust me. There are no 30-plus-year-old guys uploading videos to YouTube on a regular basis because that would just be ridiculous. They're, those they guys did, are cherishing losers. life. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I think I think they're the minority though, but we only got thirty five years left. You might as well use I mean, them for the best. I only know three guys that are over the age thirty that does this, and only one of them are actually good at the game. So, <laughs> 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 are they Ken Junk and I? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what are you talking about, man? Junkyard's a beast. Yeah, did you see his? Did you see his free for all on the uh, on the crisis? You know, can I interrupt you there? I feel like every now and then I get into uh, uh, like a negative uh, a negative place in my head on like, some of the other commentators, and I don't want to be there. Like you know, they're working hard, they're putting out their thing. Uh, if if a video is not my cup of tea, I think I ought to have a nice cup of STFU and uh, move on to the next vid. I think a I lot agree. of people could use that philosophy. Unfortunately, they don't take it. Well, here's. Here's my thing about next gen tactics people are asking about. I don't consider them a channel more than like a hub because they got more than like two people running their channel. So you never know what you're getting there. If you have 35 yeah. people running a channel, that's a cult, not a channel. Yeah. They do a lot of good <laughs> stuff there. Like I don't watch in I've said this before. I don't watch anyone's videos, but if something is on the front page of YouTube, I check it out. Next gen tactic does uh like, uh, what's that? Is that guy's name Spider Bite? Something like that? Yeah, there's a Spider Bite and a Guns for Hire. Those are the two. Uh, who's the bald guy? Guns for Hire. Guns for he Hire. He does a pretty good job. I, I'll, I, I will oftentimes like watch his videos and what he's got to say. 
They both do a good job. Uh, Guns for Hire does a good job with, um, like, he does these rants sometimes, and they're pretty entertaining to watch. Yes. And Spider Bite, it, this is just my opinion, his core competency are these Let's Plays. And, like, I saw him do one with, uh, I think it's called God of War or Gods of War. God of War. And, uh, man, he talked so much trash against every guy that he fought. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was really entertaining. It kind of cracked me up. Yeah, Guns for Hire, I remember a while back, like, he did a video... It was before Black Ops, and he was basically telling people like how they should handle, um, you know, putting out content early. And he just really, he was like, "If you get your channel deleted, it's your own fault, dumbass." And he was just I think like, "I remember seeing that video." Yeah, it was a good video, and I was like, "Yeah." He's like, he, he's he's like talking about like you know, if you do this and you do that, you're a dumbass. If you do this and that, you're a dumbass. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Yeah, That's there is a thing about Machinima Directors not talking about other Machinima Directors, but Next Gen Tax isn't a Machinima Director. They're actually the game station, so we're, yes, we're, we're good here. I don't <laughs> think we said anything negative about them. Like, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed their stuff. On like, one of the few channels that I, I watch occasionally. I have a topic. So um, I, I want to know who's the next champ on the YouTube scene, right? So uh, I think we can all kind of agree that Hutch was the last champ and that uh, maybe he's passed the torch to C-Nanners. And, and the champ is... I guess the guy, kind of blows the, guy up. Has, the guy, yeah, who has the most influence and sway on YouTube at the moment. It doesn't have to be your favorite guy. Like you know, you, your favorite guy might be Bash, LOL, right? But but he's <laughs> not. He's not the current champ of YouTube. And, and yeah, like you giggle, but you know what? I bet we all go to our own channel, and if you read your own comments, you get to thinking that you do the best stuff on YouTube. And then I'll read like you know, I'll go to Bendro's channel and read his comments, and it's like this is really weird. <laughs> they all seem to like him. What the deuce? <laughs> how dare they not like me? Yeah. How come these comments aren't about me, too? So, so, <laughs> you know, so, I, uh, I look um, at a lot of people's channels and wonder how they got big. But I think Tabe is probably going to be the next champion. Hmm. Probably so. I think you got to look at... I think what a defining feature is somebody who's consistently getting a lot of views. And I think that you do a good job with that, Woody. Uh, I think Tabe does a great job at that. I do a pretty damn good job at it. Jaws is doing a great job at it consistently. Mm-hmm. And um, See, yeah, beyond that, nobody's really crushing those, you know, 80,000 views a video, every single video. So, yeah, I've kind of I've kind of sold to myself. I take my channel loosely now. It's like, I'm going to put videos up. I don't do it on my schedule. Like, if I want to put Dragon Age up, I put Dragon Age up. Because I, I, I tried to do that, what Jaws is doing, and I did it for a long time. And it got to the point where I just wasn't happy with with what I was doing in life. I mean, I wanted to play other games. So I, Sandy Ravage doesn't post content though, dude. Like yeah, what? Sandy, like once a you you got to post more yeah. than one video every two weeks to. <laughs> yeah, Sandy yeah. Ravage. So everyone agrees he's a beast of a player. And um, like so so all right. Let me start by saying this: I really like Sandy Ravage. Sandy yeah, have you guys was, noticed uh, that Sandy quit uh, putting Black ads Ops. videos? Did he? Yeah, he's what? put music. He started putting music back on his videos and stopped running ads on them. Yeah, so let, let me keep going here, Wings. So um, so I like Sandy. I, I've talked to him as a guy. He's a really super person, and uh, he's a beast, beast of a player. And I wonder, though, like it, how he would have differentiated himself if he did commentary. What he does with music and with the uh, Duke Nukem and, is it Quake? Someone help me where he gets those voices from. But uh, Unreal Tournament. Yeah, Unreal Unreal Tournament. Tournament. Thank you. That's where it is. So, so he does the Unreal Tournament, the Duke Nukem, and the music thing. And that was a freaking genius idea, but um, like I wonder how Sandy would have done if he commentated more videos. Like, what makes Sandy's gameplay that much different than other people who go, you know, 112 and 10 every now and then? I think that uh, well, one, I don't know. I think I think the thing that's really holding him back is he's so busy with school. A, he's mm-hmm. really not like into this thing like up to his neck like we are. You know, we're pretty serious about the whole thing. And uh, um, I think he hates Black Ops. And but as far as the way he does his content, the music is one thing. He can't put the music on there if he wants to, you know, run ads. But and really, if he wants to like not be in danger of losing his channel, but he can put that Duke Nukem stuff and the Unreal Tournament stuff. So if he wanted to, he could put out two videos a week, like Duke Nukem mode, and he could be huge. He's just not. That's just not his goal right now. He's got a really nice career ahead of him, I'm sure, and that's what he's focused on. And, and he going to be a lawyer or something? Computer uh, science, I yeah, believe? Going, that's right. He's got a master's in, in comp sci right now, which is where his attention is. And uh, like, I've got one of those, too. I can tell you, it, <laughs> it'll consume your every waking moment. Like, I, I imagine he's just too busy for games and YouTube at the moment. 
So, yeah. But it, as far as... It, Tabe isn't a bad guess for next king of YouTube. Uh, you know, he grows a lot, and he does... like Tabe hits these home runs every so often. Like when he did that music video and he got on MTV and stuff like that. Yeah. That, uh, you know, that can launch him outside. Um, maybe the next guy from our community that becomes the uh, what I'll call the king of our community is a guy who does stuff that the very, very biggest stuff guy do. You know, who's starts with gameplay and moves over to a vlog type idea. Hey, you know, I haven't looked at Tave's channel in probably six months. He's got almost 300,000 subs. Yep. Yeah. But his, but his shit, his shit gets about the same amount of views as mine. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, he's, he's averaging 16 to 15,000 a video. Hmm, it's kind of lowish for that many, you would think. But yeah. then again, I have uh-huh. 90... I have a hundred thousand, and I get like ten thousand. The, the Call of Duty, Call of Duty, uh, is kind of really saturated right now. There's so many commentators; everybody has their favorite. They might sub to all of us, but only watch a few of us. That, that's exactly. The, that's, that's what I'm trying. I'm trying to like completely differentiate myself in every single way possible. Like I was thinking the other day, I was like, you know, I could get on Black Ops and play for three hours and get myself a nice TDM and do commentary, but. Would it really be as interesting to people as me shooting a gold AK-47? Probably I think you should, not. I think you should post one every now and then, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I posted a, I posted one I, yesterday. I posted a gameplay yesterday. I must have missed it. <laughs> it was a. It, oh, it wasn't my gameplay, but oh. it, I, it was me doing the commentary over gameplay, which is good enough. You got fifty thousand views. Everybody seemed to enjoy it. That's acceptable. I think so. Yeah, absolutely. So. uh... Hey, I have another advice question from my message box. Do you guys want to hear it? Round three. Yes. Go. All right. So um, so this one's fairly long. It's in two parts. Oh, hey, damn. Woody. So I pay attention to your channel a lot, and I always hear your advice on painkiller already and on your channel. What's more, every time I hear it, I seem to agree with it in a way that I hadn't actually thought of it before on my own. I have a close circle of friends, but it's a close group of friends, and I can't seem to fit in with the more popular crowd. Tried those parties where everyone gets drunk, and it's not for me. Anyway, I'm 16 years old, and I've been going through this phase where I don't feel as though I'm good at anything, and actually starting to make me, I'm sorry, it's actually starting to get to me, even though I'm generally optimistic. It's not like I don't try much. I play hockey, I'm Canadian, by the way, soccer, video games, and I try in school because that's the kind of person I am. Anyway, I'm just wondering if there's any solution, or you may advise to boost my self-confidence a little. Thanks for reading this, and I hope you keep up what you do. Your channel's awesome. I love the variety. Let me scan this quickly. Oh, oh, some extra facts. I'm short and thin, but strong for my size, and I work out. I enjoy trying hard in school, as odd as that seems. I know from your video, you may have, uh, oh, wait, I'm sorry. I know from your videos, the more info you have, the better you can give. So here's the second part. Sorry about filling your message box, but I sadly skipped over this in my first message. Uh, I did read it. No, if you did read it, they may be a little confused. I didn't detail myself very much. The problem is I feel unimportant, like I don't stand out in any way, and it's become a depressive state. I'm not amazing at anything in particular, and sometimes I feel different and less significant than everyone else. Anyway, if I got a response, it would mean a lot to me, but it's not as if I... It, because it wasn't nice to admit this problem to myself. Thanks again, etc. So uh, so here's a guy... I kind of went through the same thing. So uh, sometime... I, did he say he was 16? Do you guys help me? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. It was... Uh, maybe I was a little slower to figure it out than him. Sometime around 18... I realized that I wasn't going to be a rock star. I mean, I didn't sing or play any instruments. And I realized that I wasn't going to be an Olympic athlete. And uh, I realized that I wasn't going to be a fighter pilot. Uh, and you had some high kind of, hopes. <laughs> right. And then sometime, like, around like 29 or 30, you realize you're not going to be Bill Gates or Warren Buffett or whoever it is that uh, that you were shooting for career-wise. And... Uh, it was like, wow, you know, at some point you start to recognize that you're just an ordinary person. And I think it happens to, you know, 99.99% of the population. It's just, that's how things go. And, uh, you know, what do you tell a guy who's going through this transformation where he's just started to notice that uh, he's a regular person? It's one of those things you just tell him to stick it out because eventually you'll feel better. I mean, especially younger people go through it. I don't know. I don't know. Here. I can't give good advice on this because I'm sitting there thinking, like, man, he thinks life sucks now. Just wait to boat taxes, land taxes, truck taxes, <laughs> truck car insurance, truck insurance, county taxes, gas bill, light bill, water bill. <laughs> so when you get to the point where your life, where everybody, where everybody's got their hand out, and you got nothing in your hand, and you got to give them all something. 
Yeah, life. It's <laughs> one of my favorite movies. Is um, oh god, why would I dra- draw a blank now? Falling uh, Fight Club. Okay. Falling Down's great. That's that's a really good yeah. But Fight Club. There's a scene where Brad Pitt goes, you know, we're brought up to believe we can all be rock stars and movie gods, but in the end it doesn't work out that way and we're left with, with what there is and it's real life. And that's a really good quote. And you just gotta like I like like I never watched T V and saw the, saw like, you know, the rock stars and movie gods said, Yeah, I could be that guy. I was like, let's just be I happy did. where we are. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty I'll, happy where I'm at right now. I wanted to be George partially. Fisher for a long time in my life. Who's George Fisher? The lead singer of Cannibal Corpse. What's Cannibal Who's, Corpse? <laughs> I'll pass uh, on Cannibal that. Corpse. Oh, you know, the ah. whole... And I can't actually, understand a thing they say. Well, you're not supposed to understand. They use their <laughs> voice as an instrument. Like, do you understand what the, uh, the trumpet is? They, they need to retune that fucking instrument. <laughs> yeah. If you got into it, Kyle, you'd understand it. It's like one of those things that you'd have to actually try. It's like you you hear these people with like the bass Wings, in the car. I, and I like, could say oh. that about I could say that about gay sex to you, and you'd be like, <laughs> "Hell no, I, I ain't trying." Like, Come man. on, man. Come on, man. Gay yeah, sex. but that's like, a, that's a whole different that's a, a that's a whole it. different level of extremes there. I, I, wow. I'm looking for like the bass music. You see the you, you when you when you're driving your car and you see people with the bass music like boom, like how can you like that? And then you actually get some of it. It's like man, this is pretty cool. You yeah, know. All right. I, I'll tell you what. Like Rammstein is about as close as I'm gonna get to like enjoying something like that. They just sing in another language. They don't growl. <laughs> I, well, they kind of do. They got a, kind of a rat. It's like dust, du hast, du hast nicht. I don't life. know. It's it's pretty good. I I, I could listen to that. Sure. I didn't even know what it was. I had a friend from Lithuania, and he used to like he knew what the words were saying, and he would he would like translate it as the song went on. And I was like, it "Sounds better when I don't know what they're saying." It does. Yeah. They, they don't have translate that difference. anymore. <laughs> Rammstein actually translate to flamethrower. That's the name of the band. Flamethrower. That's pretty cool. Hmm. Can we let's so come up for this, can, for this guy? They, yeah. I, I wish I had some more specific advice on how to accept that you are a regular person. Uh, you know, it, it sounds like he's kind of maximizing who he is at the moment, and, and that's pretty cool. And uh, it does get a little better, you know, as you grow up and people stop grading you on, on such a level and just start being cool to each other. Here's here's my advice. Stop looking at life as peaks and valleys and look at it as like a picture show that you get to sit through. Um, enjoy everything that you can when you get to have it. Like, for example, like I've been enjoying Dragon Age lately, and I love the Dragon Age story. I, I've actually cried playing the game a couple times. Because the story is that intense and stuff. Wow! And uh, if I was looking it at my be life, because you're gay. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, if I was, <laughs> if I was looking at my life as peaks and valleys, like, well, I'm high up right now. I wonder what's gonna happen when I go low. You know, you you don't like your life as much. But if you if you just deal with life as it comes to you, it's much more enjoyable. Don't look at like somebody else and be like, like I've done the same thing. I've looked at somebody like, well, I'm 24. This guy's 22 and he's on TV. <laughs> you know, most of those things are victims of circumstance, dude. You never know how he got there. I mean, he might have trained his whole life for that and had and pretty much gave up his childhood to be where he is right now. And then I've seen so many VH1 shows. I know that motherfucker is going to be on, hit a hit a low here in a minute, and he's going to be right <laughs> back down here in the gutter with me. I mean, it's just the way life works. They 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 build you up, and they spit you out, and then. You go home, you wake up the next day, you got a bill to pay. I mean, don't worry about it so much. It just comes with time. It'll get better in time. That's pretty much it. Uh, apparently, I've, there's, we've got a lot of Lithuanian listeners out there. So to all of you, I, ha- I say echnakwi. And have a nice day. <laughs> have, you added the A. God bless it's you. Have a nice day. <laughs> echnakwi, have a nice day. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Enjoy. When we take over the country, you can be general. Hey, we talked about who the next king of YouTube was. <laughs> what do you think the next king game is? So, uh, I, I think Call it's kind of undeniable. <laughs> Call of Duty is the current champ, right? And and the next version of Call of Duty might be the next champ. I don't know. But uh, um, there will someday be a game that replaces Call of Duty. I mean, there was a game that replaced Halo, and there was a game that replaced Pac-Man. You know, it, it happens. What could possibly replace... Call of Duty. Uh, they've been you trying see, for years. You, you see, if I say in Battlefield 3, I, I think Battlefield 3 will make a dent, but I think it's more of a stepping stone than anything. 
You know, um, think about Battlefield Three. Is it coming out in November? I don't know the actual date. I see. I, I looked at this year's releases. I didn't see it on it. What's possible is Battlefield Three comes out in November and Call of Duty doesn't, and it opens a door. Mm. Here's 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 what you're gonna have to do to beat Call of Duty. I may, we, I may have said this like last week or sometime. First of all, you gotta you gotta come up with a new game engine. You gotta roll at sixty frames per second because that's the benchmark now, and yeah, you have to entertain the people. In can the I way start a new game, pal? Please. The only problem with like Battlefield running at 60 frames per second is they'd have to cut down on the map size dramatically, and that would take or, away from the overall game. Or up the hardware. Yeah, but see, we you, you can't up the hardware. It's a PlayStation 3. It's not like something open. Four. Yes, We're talking about yes. what's going to be the next big game. Yeah, yeah I don't see anything. Maybe what shakes it up. Maybe it'll take see. a new console, and then like the first game out of the gate who does the new console best becomes the new winner like that's possible there you go that, that's how call of duty ch- did it didn't it i yeah that might be fair to say uh, um, a few guys two? in the chat are calling out uncharted 3 and gears both of which have the potential to be really good games but, but they're console cross platform yeah I, mean, I don't i don't think it will dethrone it anyway regardless if it was cross platform or not well betting against a game is easy right like you know give me any football team and i'll bet that they lose that they don't win the super bowl and i'll the probably Patriots. right Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, I think the odds of any particular team losing and not winning the Super Bowl are are pretty good. So, uh, um, and, and that's how I look at games. You know, like, oh, Gears won't be the next champ. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it's easy to bet against them. To bet for someone, that's the hard part. And uh, yeah, I, I don't. It, it's got to be something uh, that's cross platform. I don't I, think anything. I'll, I'll, can, I was on Kyle's line here. Um, Kyle, Kyle basically says it's going to take two platform. That's going was hitting at. When I said Battlefield 3 would be a stepping stone. If they design Battlefield 3 for this generation, it's probably going to flop just like Battlefield Bad Company 2. Yeah. You know, not, not flop in the sense it won't sell and make money, but flop in the sense that nobody will stay to it. Like everybody bought Battlefield 2, but most people just returned it, you know, a month later. Yeah, yeah same, but, same thing happened with Medal of Honor pretty much. Isn't that dead now too? Yeah, to that, deal that, with that Call thing of Duty. is beyond dead. <laughs> yeah, to, here's what you got to do to compete with Call of Duty. You've got to have that RPG esque uh, um, facet to the game. I know Woody hates the RPG asset. Mm-hmm. You know the unlockables, the building up the things, and they did take a step backwards with the with the COD points in this game slightly because you don't have to get the headshots for your camos. You don't have to get a certain number of kills for this or that. But that is what keeps people coming back. The the fifteen prestiges, just that you're never really done with the game, or at least by the time you are done with the game, the next one's coming out. That's what keeps people stuck to Call of Duty like glue. And to compete with that, first of all, you've got to pretty much copy what Call of Duty is, and then you've got to build upon it. And I completely it, that's disagree. hard to do. I, I think you I, do. I, I, I don't think the RPG element has anything to do with it. They could take oh, it that does. out. It, they could take that out the next Call of Duty, and that shit would still sell like a hotcake. It'll I sell, but, it, but they won't try. stick to it. But I think look the here. reward system they have really helps with that, though, for a lot of people at least. Not everyone, but the reward system still does keep a lot of people there. It, but uh, Trust me, I wouldn't have played I think the I think the factor not is not. how easy Call of Duty is to pick up. Like, anybody can come over and play Call of Duty. Like, you see people on Black Ops all the time playing with their friend. Their friend probably never even touches a PlayStation. Like, here, play, we'll play together. You know, that's the factor you got to do. You got to pretty much make it easy for them to pick up. You got to have shit in there that has like Ghost or Second Chance or, you know, the stuff or the AK-74, you the easy mode. Commando guns. Pro. You know, wow. stuff like that. I didn't that's expect what, that. I, I, I mean, when, when I picked up COD 4, I, you know, <laughs> I got raped. For so long, I was ready to buy a whistle. I, I, it was awful. <laughs> the rape whistle. <laughs> the rape whistle, exactly. I don't think a new player walks in to uh, like a Call of Duty series and starts doing well in multiplayer. Not usually, yeah, no. But it's easy to pick up. It's easy to understand. The levels are don't take forever to learn. You understand. Remember, it's easy to understand the basic mechanics, but... As for like, more advanced stuff. Like for example, like it's easier to pick up Call of Duty than it is Battlefield. Battlefield, you'll wander around getting killed over and over again, and, you, and you'll and you just get frustrated because you don't understand where you're getting shot from. See? Yeah. Call of Duty has the kill cam. They show you how you died. You know, they have open chat. They have, you know, all these things. Whereas Battlefield, you have closed chat. You don't have a kill cam. You have... You know, a big map where everybody can shoot at you, and you—it's a frustrating experience if you're yeah. not willing to get into it. Whereas Call of Duty is more of a running gun experience, and it's more open to players. 
Kill Cam is epic. I, I I don't see myself getting into any game without a Kill Cam. We picked up Medal of Honor, remember? Because it had come, I'll say summer, everybody's sort of interested in what other games are out there, right? Come summer is when all the YouTubers have played enough Call of Duty and are opening their eyes to see what else is, is around. And we all grab Medal of Honor. And that lack of Kill Cam was so infuriating. You know, snipers head glitching from some little corner. It was crazy. And you would just die, and it felt like... You didn't know what you did wrong. There was no feedback. Heck, even Halo, I thought, you know, could have improved from there. So, uh, so yeah, kill cams are really critical. Uh, mm -hmm. Better mini maps too. Like Battlefield has a mini map that kind of works, but it's nothing on the level of Call of Duty. Whereas, you know, you get a UAV up, you see the people coming, so you can prepare for them. Battlefield, you more got to you got more got to realize spawn knowledge. You got to know where the people are going to be spawning at. Where's their chance of being spawning at? Whereas Call of Duty, it just Radar's constantly updating you where the other team's at. Yeah, I mean that's that's a, that's another fact why Call of Duty is successful in Battlefield is not. I mean, you got to make it noob friendly. You have to. I mean, well, it does a good job of teaching people what they did wrong and what they can improve on if they want to pay attention to it enough. Like other games don't. If you played Medal of Honor and got killed, you don't know where the fuck you got killed from. So you're like, what the hell did I do wrong? Where was the spot he was at? Yeah, and somebody just says, Chad said that the spawn delay on Battlefield was annoying. I don't see that as a deterrent because I started out on Battlefield and it did, the, the spawn delay didn't turn me off of it. Like, but that, this was way, this is before Bad Company and then this was like Modern Combat was my first Battlefield console. But and, wait, you don't feel like the spawn delay adds to a slow pace, which t takes away but, from a Battlefield has more appeal. people than Call of Duty, so it's not like you never have anybody to shoot. You have twelve There's people. No the other team versus six. Delay. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, but it also keeps you from getting raped <laughs> over and over again. You know that, also, that's a pretty good counterpoint. Yeah. <laughs> did, anyone, did anyone ever play Mag for the PS3? I did. No. It, it's and I didn't fest. like it. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, nah. I mean, the, I usually don't complain about graphics, but Mag's graphics and mechanics turned me off of it. Because I like the idea they put battlefield style games in it, 128 versus 128. But in the same aspect, you realize it's 128 lines of sight as well. <laughs> you know, so yeah, you you're getting shot from move. 30 different places. It's pretty much it's pretty much find a camp spot and pick people off as they come. That's the best yeah. way to play mag. Did, as far as shooters, the best mag player on in the land. I wasn't really actually that good at mag because <laughs> I'm teasing you. Yeah. <laughs> As far as shooters go, though, like I think obviously Call of Duty is king, and you have to look at its competitors, and then you have to look at what, what Call of Duty has that the competitor doesn't have, and that is and that is obviously what differentiates Call of Duty and what makes it more successful. It's the differences between Call of Duty Black Ops and Battlefield style games. It's it, that's that's what makes it so successful. And that's what I think Call of Duty does okay. well. I think the kill cam and the mini map are the best in gaming. And it has a fast pace, and that fast pace makes it, uh, you know, fun to play. It, yeah, it, it just controls controls very fluidly compared to some other games. Some of it feels janky yeah, I mean, and slow. I, I think I think the fluid controls are are just something people throw out there. Like I if you it. play battle, if you play Battlefield long enough, you don't even feel that no more. You get used to it. It's kind of like um, it's like if you're fat and you start running, you get tired <laughs> of shit. But if you run for like a month, you can run. You can just run because your body's used to it. Or like, I you know, don't or, know about I that. I tried playing Kill Zone, and that I never got used to that. The, the controls know. are just are, are clunky, man. They're all right. The, 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 would you you got to admit the COD, the Call of Duty controls? They're not Call of Duty controls. That's, that's, yeah, that's what that's what you're superior. trying to tell me. I, I wouldn't go so far as saying they're superior, but they're just yeah. different. Oh, I don't know how you could say that. The Call of Duty is just because so. I played like, Battlefield. I played Battlefield for probably fifty-two levels or something like that, and. You know, it got to the point where it did, it didn't feel different than Call of Duty. You know, it, I got to the point where my fingers were trained enough to put more pressure on the sticks to turn at this rate, just like Call of Duty. Yeah, I guess so. But what you got to keep in mind is if someone has been a long time Call of Duty guy and they pick up Battlefield and maybe they rented it or got it from GameFly or whatever and they play it for three hours, they're going to be turned off by something like this: the thirty frames per second, the the non fluidity or whatever in uh, the controls. And some of the other game mechanics that are in Battlefield that that you love, like I mean, like the vehicles and like the the choppers and stuff like that, you don't pick that stuff up quickly. 
Oh yeah, like, you don't pick helicopters up quickly. Hell you no. Have to, you have to learn helicopters. Yeah. It took me four or five it's, weeks. Of it's trying probably to kind of, easier. It's, it's probably easier to actually learn how to fly a helicopter than it is to learn how to fly one in battlefield. That thing is hard to fly. Surprised they just didn't have like a pilot school sitting off next to a map. Like this is how you fly this helicopter. They so really need like a game a mode. That, like yes, they need like a, a tutorial mode where you just fly choppers around. You have to get That's accredited hard. and licensed. They should have put that in. Yep. New topic? <laughs> yeah, I just want to say I, I can fly the helicopter and you can't, Kyle. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sure I have a silly topic. Cannot. So so I have been on my best behavior not to bring up Kyle's uh, FPS duck like uh, wealth. <sighs> and then this guy goes out and gets a golden AK 47. Like, how could I not touch on that one? Like, it, it, it's like you're taunting me. Like, Woody, hey, man. Back off on the whole uh, I'm richer than Bill Gates thing. And then, boom, there you are on YouTube with a golden yeah, gun. Dude, that was a freebie. Let me let me feel this one for you, Kyle. That's a freebie. See, FPS Russia, he has connections with the Cuban, you know, the the, the, uh, the little Cuban resistance. buddies with Fidel. And, you know, it was his birthday, and Fidel got him a gold AK <laughs> because, you know, Fidel's got the Russian connects. Did he get you a golden cigar, too? Golden Cubans, yep. I've been smoking them all day. I'm high as shit on gold. Sweet. <laughs> it's gold! <laughs> and Kyle's got a bu- he's got two, three sacks full of sugar. He's got a gold AK and a box of Cuban cigars. I mean, what more can you want? A gold you guys want to see me? Do you guys want to see me smoking a big Cuban cigar in the next one? If you just say so. I'll, I'll, I'll do like the Scarface, like limp, like with the one leg straight, and like come down the stairs with it and just open up if you guys want. You should paint it gold, too. That'd be cool. I'll paint the cigar gold. Why the fuck not? Make sure it's not like lead paint. Oh That's no, we're smoking the lead right up. We, you want me as like messed up as possible during this thing? You really will have a Russian accent. No, yeah, I, I had to look. I, I figured that's like the coup de gras of like video game bringing something in a video game that's silly and like ridiculous, and then actually doing it. Like, you know what I'm gonna do in about a week? I'm gonna have an RC car chasing me uh, <laughs> with explosives tied to it. And you're going to have a view from the RC car and a view from my point of view, hopefully a camera strapped to my forehead, and then me shooting at it with an AK and blowing it up, you know, mere feet away. So that's, I mean, that's, that's the kind of awesome. stuff that I want to bring to the video. Like, I want to, I want to, like, like see you, that, that sounds like dangerous. See you repel from a building and then shoot your way through a plate glass window and fly into the, whatever, 11th story. Can you make that happen? Um, I could repel from a building. I don't know about you. I'd have to get. Do I have to use a silenced dog? <laughs> no. <laughs> you might yes. want like a buckshot or something, dude. That, that video, stunts, that or? video would cost so, so, <laughs> That video would cost so much money. But it would make so much money. That video would. But he be has huge. a golden AK. What the hell does he care? <laughs> well, well, I've, got, I've got a very tiny wireless camera. That uh, I bought a while back for this video, and um, somebody asked if I was going to blow up a camera. But it's it's only like eighty dollars. It's it's one of those spy cameras. Not going to lie, I'm not doing anything dirty with it. But that's what it was made for. It's made to be a spy camera that transmits to you, to you. And so I'll just attach that to the car. So that's the point of view you would have. You know, this is completely off topic, but it seems like Tabe has uh, gave up on Black Ops as well. Yeah, <laughs> COD Four gameplay today. It's, it's COD Four for the last month, dude. Yep. I um. I don't want to you know, go crazy about these messages, but I got a particularly good one. And oh, here we go. Share. All right. Are you guys ready? Let me say one thing before you get that. Somebody said they'll <laughs> send me a cheap camera. If you want to send me a cheap camera, then I'll show you what it looks like to be shot. I'll shoot the camera if you if you just want to send me like your cheap old junk camera, and I'll upload that. All right. That's all. Right. all. So the subject is I need help beating depression, and uh, I, I read through this. It's actually pretty good. Woody, I've been a fan of your channel since the summer when my friend linked me to your video about your suicide attempt. I've been suffering from clinical depression since 2008 and have had a really rough time. I know this seems like a lot of pressure that you might feel outside of your element of health, but just keep in mind, I don't go overboard anymore and my depression is healing just slowly. Now, you don't have to answer or read, you don't have to answer this or read this. However, I look up to you because of everything, you are everything I wish to be. Yikes. Now, here you have an amazing wife and two wonderful children. You're great with tools and offer real advice. He thinks high, more highly of me than I think of me. But anyway, yeah. I'm 19 years old, and I'm on antidepressants due to my depression going extreme. I recently attempted to cut myself and overdose multiple times. Mm. It, was a, it was about a girl. So uh, long story short, 
I love the girl I love was raped twice, and I did everything to help her return to normal. I was friend zoned multiple times, and she has a boyfriend we no longer talk. I'm so depressed. I wish I could sleep forever from this nightmare. It sucks. For the record, by the way, we no longer talk. She called me up and said sorry for everything, but I don't believe her. I haven't picked up her call since. I can't escape this depression. I feel lonely all the time. My therapist didn't do anything, and my antidepressants only do so much work. Help me. Nothing feels right anymore. I talk to as many people as possible, but it doesn't help. I can't sit down and play a game. I can't sit down and read. I can't do any of my university readings, and I have zero confidence in myself. I feel worthless and pathetic. I'm working out every so often, so that helps, but there's always those depressing moments. I'm sorry for rambling, and if this is too long, I'm sorry. But if you don't want to reply or look at this post, that's perfectly fine. You're not responsible to do anything. If you want any more information, I guess you could ask. It's not like I'm doing anything. Can I take this? Yeah. Um, I broke up. I broke up with a girl that I'd known for a really long time about four or five years ago. I think I've told this story to Woody before, but um, I was in her apartment and we broke up, and I was I was crying my eyes out, and I like got all my shit, and I went downstairs to my car, and I was as I was walking down to my car, I was planning on shooting myself when I got to the car because my my gun was in my car. I was like, when I get down there, I'm gonna I'm gonna kill myself, and I got down to the car and. Uh, and I was like, maybe I shouldn't. And I look in the back seat, and there's a big bag of her shit. And I'm like, yep, I'm killing myself. So, uh, so I get the gun, and, and I'm going to kill myself. And, uh, and then I think, well, she's going to come down tomorrow, and she's going to find me in my fucking car when my, when my, when my brain's blowed out. I'm like, I can't do that to her. I was like, I, was like, I love her too much to do that to her, you know? That's, that's why I'm killing myself, because I love her so much. I, I can't do that. So I'm like, I'll, I'll go home and kill myself. I'm like, all right, let's go home. So I go home, and I'm like, all right, it's time to kill myself now. I'm, I'm like... Well, now my roommates are going to come home and find me. What the fuck? Where am I going to go kill myself? So I'm like, all right, I'll kill myself tomorrow. We'll go to the park. It'll be a nice day. So I, uh, the next day, I was too lazy to kill myself. Not going to lie. So um, I sat there, in my, and, and I was like, dude, I'm not going to work today. I, my, I worked with my roommate at, at, a, at a car dealership. And I, I was like, so I'm just sitting there on the couch. And, uh, and he had this huge library of DVDs. So I started watching them. And I watched every DVD that he owned, including the entire Band of Brothers um, collection. He, I watched 60 DVDs before I left that couch. Uh, I, I, lost, I lost 13 pounds um, because all I ate in like three, a three-day period was a glass of milk and a peanut butter, and jelly, peanut butter sandwich. And uh, after that experience, I felt better. I, I, I think maybe like you just need to get some perspective on the whole thing before you make any rash decisions. Um, and, and think about how... like hurting yourself would hurt the people around you and um and always remember that, that there's always another day and band of brothers is awesome you might want to watch that that cheered me right up <laughs> i have a question i have a question kyle yep did your friend have the gun with the wind box set no no god oh, no. damn it that no, would have made I, everything way better that would, i'd have blew my brains out on the couch if he <laughs> <laughs> I know, this might be bad advice but I, i'd say give up on that girl that you're going after because if she's went up went through three different guys she's obviously really good looking and she's pretty much superficial and you've already ascended into what you call the friend status did once you go into the, different guys did i miss it he said she got raped twice i don't know if it's about the same person but oh, okay I, but, yeah and I, but i'm i'm just assuming it's two different guys there but You've ascended into what you call the friend category, and once you get there, you, you're basically considered harmless. It's kind of like guys in wheelchairs. Girls will flirt with a guy in a wheelchair because they consider them non-threatening. Yep. And you're in that same category. Um, my best bet for you, buy a hooker. I'm, I'm dead, I'm dead <laughs> serious. So that's a short-term solution or no, long-term. I, no, no. The, the fact is, buying a hooker and getting your whistle wet will make you forget about a lot of things like girls and make you make you less stuck up on, on certain aspects like that. What you know, if you that's get some a personal ST thing there. Like, so I'm thinking about that, right? If, if he were to go that route, and I wouldn't judge him, you know, what if afterwards, you know, he has this view of himself that's pretty low? Like, what if afterwards he's like, man, what am I doing here? This isn't where I want to be. Like, it's not the, the happy experience with the, the glow afterwards that you uh, are predicting it to be. What if it's this like moment of I don't want to say shame. Animals and heat project, you know. But but yeah, well, you know, I can just picture him sitting on the edge of the bed thinking, oh, wow. I, I, where well, am here, I? well, here's here's the advice to that. Nothing ever, no foundation ever built upon happiness ever lasts. You, happiness comes in second samples. I mean, nothing you ever build with the, on the, on the foundation of happiness will ever last in your life. 
you can build a marriage on based on happiness, it will never last. You have to be able to deal with the person for an extent. That's why marriages has such a high fail rate today. That people are happy when they get married, but once once they learn where they have to actually live with each other, they fall apart and they just don't want to deal with each other. If you if you have a more of like a consistent basis or more of like a serious relationship, your marriage is going to succeed a lot more than just being happy for that moment of time and making rash decisions. I never base your life upon, is this going to make me happy? Like, Woody probably wasn't happy going to school, for example, like doing all those degrees, but he's probably happy where he's at now that he can he can support his family and all. You kind of see so, what I'm saying? And buying incredibly expensive table saws <laughs> that, his, that his wife almost destroyed. <laughs> With her awful driving. Um uh, oh, oh. So, like, in my thoughts on depression. Now, I'm, I'm not trained on this, but I've got experience with it. So that's just one person. But uh, for me, what, what the depression was really about was a future that I didn't think was very bright. And uh, I, I wonder if he's in the same mental spot where he's like, "Man, you know, this girl's not digging me. Life isn't going my way. You know, what's the deal here? I can't find happiness." And uh, you know, if he sticks it out, if he just keep plugging away. He he will find things that do make him happy. He will find some success in life. He'll find something that captures his interest, and uh, and things will get better. Uh, this girl broke his heart. Yeah, girls are known to do that. Um, <laughs> and it, it's like that whole many more fish in the sea thing sounds so cliche when you hear it. It sounds so worthless, but um, it's so not. You know, there are there are so many girls out there who who can you know be your life partner, who can be on your side uh, through thick and thin. That uh, you know, you just start. Uh, you know, and guess what? Trolling. New ones are created every day. I don't, <laughs> yeah, he, he's nineteen. <laughs> I don't think. Hey, any I, I wouldn't control. give that away, dude. I was saying, I met somebody who had like a husband that was fifty-one, and she was like twenty-six, and I was like, dude, he was like twenty by the time you were born. <laughs> we went through that yeah. out the window. I don't think any one girl who's gonna act like that or. At least not give you the time of day is is worth that much turmoil. I mean, you just eventually have to find someone who will give you the time of day because they are out there. There's a ton of them. There's got to be one eventually you'll stumble across that's going to be even better than what you're trying to get now. Yeah, like what are you looking for in a girl? Like we could probably hook you up with somebody. How, how are we gonna hook him up with somebody? Kyle? We don't even know where he lives at. <laughs> that doesn't well, matter. Well, I know girls around email. the country. Yeah. That's- like that's one of, the, one of my issues. A lot of times. I, I, I think relationships are the last thing he needs at this point in his life. I think he needs companionship, but he doesn't need like a like a relationship with a girl. Like he needs to be able to feel good about himself. He needs like a like a group, like um maybe like a YMCA would be pretty much the ideal you know place for him so to some be. Kind of, really needs some kind of like some place where he can feel like he's part of a team. Like like you and, don't want to go to like one of those meetings in a circle or anything. But if know, you just had like a group of friends you go bowling with and you draw a basket not. or like play basketball or something like that where you yeah, feel like you're important to somebody else. That's a really, really good idea, Wings. I love that. You know, and, and so like people have heard me talk about sports before. You don't have to be great just to play. First of all, like let's say you're a small guy. Like man, there's a, there's sports out there for you. There's like a wrestling team or whatever. It's, he's 19, so he's he's out of high school. Um, but you, you can jump in a men's basketball league or volleyball league or uh, you know there are adult lacrosse leagues filled with people yeah. who don't have tons of lacrosse experience, just like you. Yeah. What um, you want to get into is like a uh, what what is it when it's like men and women. It's like co-ed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You that, want to get into like co ed volleyball <laughs> league. Yeah, it's soccer, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah no, I but, want um, Does anybody know one? Co ed beach volleyball. <laughs> let, let me go on about this a little bit longer. That it's a fun thing to do. And, and what Wing said was really, really neat in that uh like you'll be in this locker room and you'll be important to somebody. You know, after you're there like five, seven weeks in a row, you are part of that team. You have a bond with these guys, you have a common goal. And uh, you know, you're joking, you're goofing, you're whatever saying nasty things about each other in lots of fun, in a fun spirit. And, uh, yeah, man, it, it, getting into a group like that and, and forming some relationships, that's you know, that's where happiness comes from, right? Your relationships with other people. So uh, so there we have it. Hey, somebody in the stream uh, met, shucks, I'm going to mess it up. I forget who we met, but it was a, a senior guy from Infinity Ward, and he talked to him about the post-release support that Modern Warfare 2 got. And asked us to call him. So, uh, you guys ready for that? 
Uh huh. Okay. Uh, Are we sure this is coming? Go, this call could probably go bad so many ways. Let's do this. <laughs> and hope for the best. We'll, we'll uh, see if he's legit or not. Oh, this is going to be a prank. No way. Yep. Hello? Hey, how are you? We're from Painkiller already? Holy shit. <laughs> okay, what's up? So you're, what was your name in the stream? Comma something? Kamikaze Soldier. Kamikaze Soldier. So who did you yeah. meet fr- from Infinity Ward? I met... Oh my god, I'm blinking now. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I met the one of the co-founders of Infinity Ward. And mm-hmm. uh, the way that I met him was uh, his son takes uh, taekwondo lessons from um, from my cousin, and uh, the way that like I met him was I, I came into my cousin's studio, and uh, he was there, so I just started talking to him. My cousin introduced me. Okay, and you talked to him about the support that Modern Warfare got after its release. Yeah, like uh, you know, as a as a gamer, like playing that game. Like a lot of us weren't happy about that at all. Like I know you. What's guys the name? Of, what's the name of your cousin's studio? Iron Fist Martial Arts. Iron Fist Martial Arts. Iron Fist. Iron Fist. It did kind of sound like Iron Fist. That was pretty funny. That's yeah. a pretty cool name, though. Like you know, like for, t- we teach you to fight, and our dojo is named Iron Fist. Like, Iron Fist. <laughs> you get, you'll be getting what you want after uh, you black belt. Are you from Canada, buddy? <laughs> no, I'm from LA. L.A. <clears throat> Guy. Which kind of ties into where uh, Infinity Ward is, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so um, uh, so you talked to him about post-release support. What did he say? Did Like, how long did you talk to him? Okay, so I, t- I talked to him for about, like, 15 minutes. It wasn't long. It, he was only there to pick up his son, and I kind of, like, you know, pestered him about it. But uh, he basically said that, you know, he wished that he could give more support to the community because, um, I, I don't know... If he if he would have, but that's what he said. He said like all the stuff like that. What? Kind of got hung out to, hung out to dry on a lot of that with a lot of calls for more balancing of perks and some weapons, and it seemed like they just didn't give a shit after a while. Mm-hmm. I think more yeah. of it had to do with the actual lawsuit they were in with Activision. Yeah, that probably didn't help too much. Yeah, I'm, I wouldn't think so. <laughs> I'm sure it didn't help them. But uh, I don't let them completely off the, the hook for that. Like, th- you guys have heard me say this before. Like, if they were in Senegal, Senegal is a small country on the western coast of Africa. If they were there and it was hard to find programmers, you know, like, there just really wasn't the talent base. <laughs> if, there, if there weren't IT professionals, like, all over the place, then uh, it'd be like, all right, I get that. Your guy quit. You're kind of in a bind. There, there's a challenge here. They're in freaking Silicon Valley. And they're like, yep. oh, I don't know. We lost some programming staff. What are you going to do? Like, you know, we're completely there's, hopeless There's no here. one to take from. Yeah, it'd, it'd be <laughs> like if you walked in there and the place was just an absolute mess. And you're like, what's going on here, man? Our janitor quit. And you can't find a new one? Well, it is L.A. I mean, there's not a whole lot of people to pick from. It's like, are you serious, dude? Come on. <laughs> Go outside and ask someone. <laughs> Go to the unemployment office and grab some out the line. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, do you need a job? All right, let's go. So, yeah, so, like, I get that they had a lot of staff turnover and that that's a challenge and that can slow the patch release, but they didn't do much at all. They, they managed to get their map packs out. That's fine. Sure, They're both yeah. Yeah, they, rust map pack. But, uh, yeah, I think the map packs came more from the EA side. Like, you know how EA, they're, they're the parent company. They're trying to make, you know, the big bucks. So they're you probably mean Activision? That more than the... the yeah, you might yeah. mean Activision. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah Activision. I'm sorry. Um... Maybe. I mean, my guess is that map packs are fairly easy to generate with the tool sets they have, they've built, and, but I'm just guessing. I don't know how they really do it. But, um, uh, yeah, I, th- they didn't support the game. They could have supported the game if they made it a priority. And uh, to me, it's tarnished Infinity Ward's name. Treyarch is now the good Call of Duty developer. Like, yeah, Infinity Ward, you came out with a good game in 2007. That's four years ago now. You, you've had your run. And... Uh, you know, next time Infinity Ward comes out with a game, oh, look, who am I kidding? I'm buying it. But that's me. I buy everything. Um, the next time they come out with a game, though, I'm going to mm-hmm. be really suspicious. They don't offer post-game support. They suck. They're not the good people. There it is. Yep, I agree. Yeah, I think Treyarch, within the first month, did more than Infinity Ward ever did with 4 and Modern Warfare 2 combined. You're probably not too far off with that. 
You yeah. know, but, but I want to ask this question. I want to ask this question. Treyarch are doing this now after the backlash from Modern Warfare 2, but they didn't bother the weapon balance any during World at War. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, is the fact that they're, they're, they're holy white knight, you know, St. Michael right now, mainly because of the backlash the community got from Modern Warfare 2? Because oh, that's an interesting thought, was, right? So th- then you could apply that to Infinity Ward and say, you know what, maybe Infinity Ward will come out yeah. and go above and beyond to repair the damage they did to their freaking tarnished, dreadful drug through the Kalmanor name that they have now. Yeah, that's the point I was trying to convey there. Hmm. Like, maybe Infinity War will come out with guns a blazing because they, they see how they pretty much tarnished their company's name at this point. So they'll pretty much pull a Treyarch and not want their name screwed up for not... Well, Treyarch, d- Treyarch's doing all this because it's good publicity. It's like, oh, yeah. Treyarch did, you know, Infinity War did this, so we'll just put some more money toward the staff and make fix all the patches. Then we'll be, you know, the White Knights. I actually think Treyarch is, uh, you know, they, I, I they think did. Treyarch learned from Infinity War's mistake. Like, I don't think it's the M40, although that might be part of it. Yeah, to me, like everybody screamed at Modern Warfare 2 so much. They said, oh, look at those guys over there. We can't be that. Yep. I agree. It's like, seriously, like, why wouldn't they patch that MP40? You know, the game's old as shit now, and I'm still upset about them not patching that. That, mm. that would be like DICE not patching the M60 on Battlefield Vietnam, the original. That game, oh my god. You guys probably didn't play that. No. Nope. Okay. The original Battlefield? The bad, original Battlefield Vietnam, the full-length game, they had a, they had the M60 on there that could equip a grade nade launcher, and it killed in two bullets on a game that generally decided to kill around ten bullets. Wow. And everybody yeah. used it. It, it. Was there anyone who didn't? No, yeah, no. It, the whole lobby it. was the whole lobby was M60 versus M60, and they had to patch it quick. They patched that motherfucker quick. Just imagine if they didn't patch it, because the M60 right there is probably the most overpowered gun I've ever come across in any first-person shooter. And then the the number two one is World of War's MP40. And I even talked to, uh, I remember talking to JD2020 back when World of War was just came out, because I was active on the forums, because Treyarch actually held a, a pretty good forum on Call of Duty.com, and they played with, like, subs the week that it came out. And I was like, dude... You have, let's, let's take two guns in example. Let's see how they're balanced. All right, we have the M1 Garand. It has eight shots. It has a shot limiter on it. It takes two bullets to kill. It then is a rifle. All right. We have the MP40. It has 65 shots. It takes two bullets to kill. Fastest run walk. Best hip fire. Fastest aim down sights. Why would I ever use the M1 Garand? <laughs> it's recoil wasn't too choppy either. No, I didn't it, play a whole lot of World of War. It had, it had less recoil than M1 Grand. M1 Grand actually had more recoil. So it's kind of like one of those guns like the F2000. What the hell were they thinking with that gun? That gun was the piece of crap. Yeah, but the fact is, why would you give a submachine gun 65 rounds and have it kill in two bullets without stopping power? That gun was pretty ridiculous. I didn't play that game very much, but that that was like the UMP, the precursor to the UMP. The, the UMP is, dude, I, I never had a problem with the, the UMP, dude. I was I mean, never good with it. I have no idea what my problem is. I, I never I looked at somebody killing me with UMP and be like, damn, that's a noob. I said the same I, thing about I, um, the AK-74U. Like The whole community seems to think that that gun is wildly overpowered. It is I'll admit wild. it's the best submachine gun, but you know, I, I have an easier time. Well, I don't know. Easier, but to me, it's the same as the FAMAS and the AUG. You, know, it, it's uh, you right throw a grip on that. Rifles. You throw a yes. grip on that 74U, and that thing is just like ACR mode almost. Yeah, it is. Like I had a, I had a, hmm. I put a video out of me on uh, Summit, well, not Summit, the Array, the big one, and I was using the 74U as a long range rifle, and I did well with it. Almost went flawless. People couldn't outgun me. They couldn't do shit. I didn't even have the grip on it. I had the fucking uh, dual mags. That's what I run on it. Maybe I should try the grip out. Uh, the, the one problem with having a YouTube channel is that you can't just grab like the the most fun weapon and run around with it because everyone but, hates on but you. But you, you heard they're nerfing <laughs> the AK-74U again, right? Yep, yeah, of course. Um, they're ta- they're taking the bullet the, down to 20. I've been playing wow. with the Caparis a lot lately. I have to get a few games with that. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, they're actually they're actually knocking the AK-74U down to 20-round magazine. That's going to be a great deal. That will yeah. fix it. If you take a lot of the... I don't like that idea. But if you take a lot of the SMGs, put extended mags and a sleight of hand on it, you got a pretty decent gun there. 
Yeah, the but then problem. you'd have to then you'd actually have to have the extended mags and the sleight of hand for make it, you know, somewhat worthwhile to what it is now. And I like that idea. If you use anything but the extended mags, you pretty much have, you know, the a one 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 kill gun. You yeah. you can't get double sprays with twenty rounds. You can I've been but doing so rare. well lately with uh, pre firing from the hip. Now my subs fuss that I shoot too many bullets, but I could give a hoot about my accuracy. Not me either. Yeah, I'll, I'll see fire around, the around the corner all day. It, uh, yeah, yeah. It, I, pre-firing, uh, hip firing, pre-firing from the hip, walking around corners has become my new go-to thing. And uh, it is working so well for me. And it, I'm sure my accuracy is like 11% or something insanely bad like that, but I don't really care. That's I'm not working, worried about my numbers. I'm just having a good time. And uh, yeah, extended mag, sleight of hand, they're awesome for that. Well, well look at it this way. If you pre-fry around the corner and you get that first hit, you cause him to flinch, and his gun goes up right away, where you don't have that hassle. Yep. yep. So you already have the advantage. Yeah, I think I think me and you talked about this like two we- a week or two ago. That we I think we both agreed that a twenty round mag would would balance that thing right out. So yep. we'll also see. You have the, when you pre fire from the hip like that, you've got this mobility advantage. Like it, if if you and I, well, I don't want to say you, right? But if me and my hypothetical opponent are like in that bad breath distance gunfight, and uh, I'm walking past him pre firing from the hip. I'm staying on target, and he's having a hard time tracing me. He's having a hard time discovering me. He's, uh, it's pretty cool. You know, it's. I didn't realize just how big a deal it was until sometime in Black Ops. But uh, yeah. I've been doing that shit since Call of Duty Four. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, and it's not to say this is the first time I pre-fired, but I've just kind of. Um, you realize how effective it is just to yeah, just I've, I've to get that first it. shot. And maybe it's that I've uh, I've uh, gotten better at it. I don't know. But uh, it's working for me. What do you think, Kama? Who, who did you ask? Asked you. <laughs> yeah, he's oh, actually me? still on the phone. Not Kyle. Kama, the kamikaze soldier. Oh, he's the guy the who's phone. been on the phone. Are you still oh. on the phone, buddy? Yeah, I'm still here. Well, that's disturbing. <laughs> I want you guys to bring it all. In. <laughs> all right. All right. He's thanks soaking for it uh... in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love it. I love it. Really absorb. <laughs> can I do a shout out to a couple of my friends out there? <laughs> yeah, sure. You give a shout out and we'll uh, we'll hang up after that. Okay, dysfunction, blind, two more gets wins, ex- insane cane, love you guys, huge yeah. All right. I love <laughs> Have none nice of the tech real names. <laughs> 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 it's always like yeah. Max one oh one. Yeah, yeah. It's never like what's up, John? Like <laughs> like to think the real Jesus one two nine eight seven two one four three. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Red Viper, stay stinging. <laughs> <laughs> XX lead sniper XXIO. Oh wait, I forgot. Lowercase X, capital X. Oh yeah, you got to do that right and put some numbers in there. Some random ass numbers. Is that <laughs> yeah. your birthday? Nope. Just random numbers. Just pounded my <laughs> fist on the keyboard. So uh, to Seamus. When some guy gives you a hard time in the lobby, right? So you're playing Xbox, and some guy curses you out for no particular reason. Do you have a, like, how do you deal with this on Xbox Live? Actually, I, most of the crap that gets said to me, I uh, walk around with CCCP in my clan tag and the uh, Soviet insignia sitting on my gun, and I'll get random, uh, oh, communist asshole messages sent to me. Yeah, I never get those. Like, there's a cult of (laughs) Russia still sitting around. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so I, what, I, I, like do you what do you say uh, back do there's probably anything? more probably more derelict satellites with the Russia symbols on there there's people that still support the Soviet Union yeah <laughs> most of the time I'll just ignore it or if I'm just pissed off that day I'll go into a long tangent about do you really think I'm a communist you know uploading to machinima in the United States yeah okay yeah I used to get a lot of hate because I had uh, Stalin on my background I was like, come on, man, it's funny as shit. <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty good. I've got two standards I pull out. Uh, one is, like, if because I, I roll with Beasts and Legends a lot, I'll just say don't leave, right? Don't leave this lobby. Stick around. Let's keep playing. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, after a couple beatdowns, they're gone, and it feels really satisfying. The other, and this is my favorite, I try to make friends with them. But, you know, like, for no reason at all. They'll be like, what is Gamertag? You're a fag. That's the stupidest Gamertag in the world. How can you be so gay? And, uh... I'll be like, well, dude, I don't, I don't know how you knew I was gay, but you might not be open to the things that I could do. Like, you, there are certain advantages to knowing gay people. The things that we can do for you that straight people wouldn't, we can still be friends. We just got off on the wrong foot. 
And uh, I'll just go on tangents like that and, uh, you know, whatever, try and cozy up to him. Do you like some interior decorating tips? Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I could redesign your living room and it would be fabulous. Oh, I'm using that (laughs) line. I can pick out your attire for a week. (laughs) <laughs> but uh yeah i just rock with it and they'll be like you know f you and i'm like man i don't know what's so wrong and where did, where did our relationship get, get like this you know and i felt like we were bonding just a moment ago and now look at us and when uh, did our relationship take a wrong turn in the last exactly. five minutes <laughs> in the last 15 seconds. which minute was it that it went down <laughs> but uh but yeah i just roll with that and um that that's become my standard response lately or if they're really young, here's one I like a lot. Like, so some squeaker will be like, you know, fuck you, man, I hate you, and uh, <clears throat> I'll just go deep with like the best Darth Vader voice I can get, <clears throat> and just bring the whole like, do you know how I can tell your parents don't love you? They let you play this game, and uh, and that always works because they're because <laughs> you know, they're like 13 years old. And, Aww. And play, yeah, playing a rated mature game. So, oh, is that one too harsh? I thought it was just freaking funny. But, that uh, was pretty good. I'll probably use that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh gosh, did I drop a bad word? Sorry about that. Um, Ooh. Oh, Woody <laughs> can't be cussing now. You lose your wholesome image. <laughs> Fuck, I used a bad word. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, yeah, I did, nobody's perfect. Now, Woody, I got a question for you. Mm. When do you deem it appropriate to cuss? Like when you're by yourself. Like if you're sitting by yourself and, like, say you stub your toe, would you cuss during that? Um, I don't know. I might. I mean, so usually if I, huh, I'm trying to think. Sometimes when I drop the F bomb, it's, you know, involuntary like that. Like I remember, uh, after the podcast last week, I, uh, I, I just hung out with the stream and I actually made a couple videos and like live streamed the process and the commentary and stuff. And, um, uh, I kept mentioning where I worked, which I didn't want to do <laughs> after like the third time I involuntarily dropped an F bomb and, and uh, and that happens, but then there are other times where uh, maybe I drop it for effect, you know, for the emphasis. That's that's part of why you do it, right? Because so, I never understood what the what the uh, what was so bad about swearing. Like, what deems a word a bad word? That's a good point. I I I, I, hmm. I don't know. I think that usually when it's a word that that we aren't supposed to say, it's it's on, it's. I don't know, that we give it all of its own power. I generally just go off of the George oh. Carlin skid. Oh, yeah. But th- there's the other thing. Like in, um, <laughs> So here's the deal. I'm going I'm to start cursing horribly here. So here it comes. In the U.S., cunt is like the freaking atom bomb of bad words, right? You drop the C-bomb, and it, it's worse than the F. The F, the S, those are not the top of the pile. Cunt, that, you know, if you were to call someone that or, or rock with it, it is, uh, it, it's the, the capital word. But, like in England, it's, it's been right there. It's lost its power through overuse. And it, I don't know, somehow that line of thinking got me in, uh, um, you know, it, it aligned with what Wings was saying. You know, what makes the word such a bad word? And, uh, yeah, I, I think that, uh, they get reserved through not being used so much. And, uh, yeah, somehow in England, cunt isn't, uh, doesn't have the same power it does here. You silly cunt. <laughs> oh, thanks, mom. <laughs> you know, it's like it's one of those. Good oh, yeah. morning like, to you too. You can say shit on TV now, right? Can you? Like that's yeah. You can say shit on TV because I remember like South Park had a whole episode de- devoted to the fact that now we're able to say shit, and they kept a <laughs> counter at the bottom left of the screen, and they said it like eight hundred times, and they don't say it anymore. So that's interesting. But South Park is on cable, right? Well, that's television, though. They'd still bleep well, it out before. See, no, they would cable and network. <laughs> like John Stewart says, the f bomb on cable. They, they no. Keep in- but you can only do that on like HBO and yeah, like, yeah. You can't channel. say the f bomb on on Comedy Central, not unless it's like one in the morning. Yeah, the FCC I, doesn't regulate cable. I, after I, one a.m., they don't. Because I remember I think, they, they, I they can say all. Up. Check it out, because I remember like Comedy Central <laughs> used to do this thing. It was called like late night uncensored or something. Oh yeah, they, they did have that. At like after like midnight or one a.m., then they would be dropping the f bombs left and right. But they like, like Friday or Saturday, they'd have some movie yeah. that would, they'd normally not be able to show it. Yeah, but like you can say shit on like the nightly news if they want to. 
I don't think it's a, I don't think it's an issue anymore. I kind of wish they did to, actually. Yeah, like I just want to understand, like, cool. like, what point did words just become like you know you can't use that? Is it the way they sound? I mean, and then they're, like I'm gonna use a, let's go to George Carlin here. You can say two balls and a strike, but you can't say oh she kicked me in the balls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. There's a, there's the, the FCC has it like down to such a precise uh, thing that you can say. I remember seeing hearing it on the radio one time. They were like, you can say this, this, and that, but you can't say this. And it was just like so many different random combinations of the words bitch and ass. And yeah, like on TV, you could call a dog a bitch, but you can't call a woman a bitch. And you you can say boobs or knockers or whatever you want to say, but it, you better not say tits. Like what? Really? You can say ass when you're referring to a donkey, but God forbid you refer to your own ass. Yeah. I don't know. It's just dumb. All right. Anyone have some final topics before we wrap up the podcast? I think we should trace down where the first censorship came from. Like, why do we need censorship? I mean, seriously, I understand that some people don't want their children offended for, like, a guy getting, like, a, getting his intestines ripped out on, like, daytime TV. But, like, Personal items such as CDs or movies, why would you ha- why would you have censorship on those? Because parents can't control their kids well enough. I mean, if, if little parents. Johnny jumps off the balcony, it's not the fucking CD's fault. It's your fault for for not being a, a a good parent. It is, but it's so easy to mitigate blame to someone else and not take any for yourself. So it's generally what happens, unfortunately. Hmm. I don't know. I really don't. I don't know why certain language is rated the way it is. Like, if you look at the, M, uh, what is it, the Motion Film Association, the MPRA or whatever? Yeah, MPRA, the Motion, Motion Film Picture Rating something. Association. Like, I, there's a whole documentary about them and how ridiculous their guidelines are and how they're like, like, it's just a group of people. It's like six or seven women, men and women who just sit there and watch the movie and they're like checking stuff off the list. Like, oh, did he like thrust too hard right there was that too obvious that that's what was going it's on too obnoxious you, you, you thrust. can thrust twice but he can't do it the third time yeah like ser- that's like legitimate stuff like like i remember one time they were talking about some movie where it was two women having sex and when the one woman came up from going down on the other she wiped her mouth and that, oh, that was, was no good. that crosses that, the line yeah, that you put that in there your movie's not going out your movie's getting an nr rating and nobody carries nr uh, I'm the, now uh, offended. Movies. Is there a yeah. director's cut of this movie? I, I think I might need to do some research. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to rewind and watch that a couple times. Like it's called Pornhub.com, Woody. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of such a thing. What is this Pornhub site you talk about? Let me just check somebody my bookmarks. Somebody sent me a Bang Brothers membership the other day. I was streaming, and uh, somebody sent me a Bang Brothers membership. So thank you, Bang Brother. Brother. Dude, send me some <laughs> porn memberships. What the hell? <laughs> oh, 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 you know what I wanted to say? If anyone's listening to this, uh, I know we've got a couple thousand people in the stream. and people. I would like XCal on Painkiller already. Uh, I sent him a Skype friend request, and he didn't pick it up. I don't know if uh, if he hates me or if he just doesn't notice it or, or what is it. But, or doesn't um, log on. <clears throat> or doesn't log on. That could be it. Uh, I've played with him before, but like uh, XCal and I aren't – like we don't run in the same circles. I, I don't talk to him very often. So um, so here is my call. Spam XCal and let him know that we'd like to have him on Painkiller already. Um, you can hit his channel. You can send him messages. You can uh, comment on his videos. Whatever it takes. But uh, Speaking of spamming, I don't think David Vondahar likes me too much. <laughs> really? Probably not. <laughs> yeah, I've tweet bombed him twice now. And the last one was, I, I'm, I'm guessing, pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> But you see, I don't have problem when people spam me with stuff. It's just like, oh, what do you know? You know, I right? welcome it actually. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't bother me. In the Somebody slightest. has been spamming me for the last couple of days, and I don't <laughs> bring attention to it. What is creature feature? What the fuck is that? Will somebody please tell me? They keep putting so it on my videos. It's a Perfect. double feature for like drive-ins, like and like a um, creature talk. Like- creature talk. Thank you. Oh, what is creature talk? That's with uh, Uber Hacks or Nova and uh, a bunch of other people. It's another stream podcast type thing. I don't know who those people are, okay? Stop putting that shit on my channels, <laughs> weirdos. Oh, they're going to spam me now. I just I don't care, really, honestly. I was just I guess the, I guess that podcast talked about you or something, and I guess everybody on your channel watches it. And obviously, 
The only podcast I listen to is the one I do. I'm just, just going to throw that out there. I don't know anything else about the gaming world. Like, I'm not even sub to half the people that do YouTube commentaries. I'm sub to Woody, Kyle. I'm sub to, um, who else am I sub to? I'm sub to Smith262. Even then, I'm about to unsub from him because I get tired of watching him run through objectives. Who's uh, this? Smith262. He's a, he's, oh, a, he's, okay. a, he's a smaller guy that... Yeah, but he get. He, I saw him. I think I, I saw him first on your channel. He posted on Salvage the the snow map on Modern Warfare Two and got an incredibly high score. But he used a noob tube, right? Yeah. Oh. That that didn't turn me off. What's turning me off is he's posting these games where he's losing, and he loses the game, but he goes like seventy and one. Ooh, yeah. See, I I didn't know where you were headed. With he, that, he has no I desire to get the no flag. No problem like, with people losing games, right? If you. If you bust your butt and try and win and lose a close one, I like that. I'm actually looking forward to getting a game like that. But um, if you just like kill horror, ignore the objective, and then take a loss, get out of here. You know, I'm not mildly impressed by that. I think yeah. I uploaded a video to Machinima once where I went like 30 something and three and lost Team Deathmatch, and I think I got ripped on for uploading a loss, which kind of sucked. Oh. Yeah, oh, that's, yeah, different that's different now. That's different. That's totally. If you go thirty and three in TDM, you've done your thing. You that's know, an like, I hate my team moment. Cause yeah, that, like everyone went ass negative except for me, and someone else went positive one. I was like thirty something and three, and it was. We yeah, lost. I got a very similar. Kills. I got a very similar game somewhere where I may have dropped forty kills in a TDM, and we lost. It's just, just stupid shit like that. Yeah, yeah, that's completely a, different. I have one on my channel. It's so people. Sometimes they fuss at me because I play with my friends all the time. But uh, so I did a live com, and I, I don't know what my scores. It wasn't two, maybe twenty seven and three, twenty five and three, something along those lines, and we still lost in TDM. But uh, like, dude, it's TDM. I, I did everything I could, just wasn't enough. I went. I think the worst I ever did was forty five and five on. Uh, I think it was Courtyard in World of War, and we lost by like ten kills at least. It was a really bad team. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, sometimes. I think my worst was that one on Quarry that Hutch commented on, and I know exactly what happened in that game. What happened is it clicked like I can bust a hundred kills this game on six v six. I'm going for it, and you know, that's just (laughs) I just I ended up falling short like eighty nine kills. But yeah. Uh yeah. So did but but when the guys do that thing like Smith is doing where they go 70 and one and never touch a flag. It's like, man, it, yeah. like you, he was showing how his... many kill streaks I didn't get because, you know, I'm doing dangerous stuff on flags. Like lots of people can work their way to kill streaks by staying out of the dangerous areas. That's not that that's below the YouTube standard now. Yeah. Like, um, like for example, what was I going to say? He showed his stats on like his seventh prestige. You know, me, you know, how many domination flags he's captured all time. Four. Thirty four. Thirty four. I was really? only thirty seven prestigious. <laughs> and all he plays is domination. Yeah, that's crazy. And I wonder how many of those were initial flags too. I bet you like them. yeah. All of them. See <laughs> the spawn flag and that's that. Yeah, somebody in the chat just I try, we try not to read the chat too much because people in the who listen to it on their pod iPods or whatever don't like it. But kill whoring against the objective is for noobs. Exactly. Exactly, you know, and guys are like, well, no, you don't understand. I had this big contribution to the team, and that's kind of true. Like, if you go 70-1, and one, you probably yeah. were a positive influence on the team. But uh, just the same, you didn't do what your team might have won if you played the objective. You're, if you go 70-1, and one, you were probably good enough to capture a flu flags. You probably could have survived while being on the Bravo flag instead of just flanking their spawn all the time, pushing them into the middle of the map or whatever it is you did to get that score. It's, yep. a two, it's a two it's a two strategy street, but there's there's certain times where it's just like I'm not going nowhere with this. Y'all can talk about something else. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what my next comment was going to be, but I'm going to wing it anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's. I don't so, know. Kyle, how did you get the gold AK seventy AK forty seven? Well, painted on. That was, I that had was some paint. No, it's dipped in gold. No, absolutely, it's dipped in gold. It's uh, it's it's eighteen karat gold. So it's just plated gold. It's not solid gold. Oh no, it's solid. It's well, the barrel couldn't be solid gold because it would melt. But the rest of mm-hmm. it's solid gold, of course. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, it's pl- it's plated gold, Kyle. It feels solid gold. The receiver would be one hundred percent gold. It's gold no, no. foil. No, it's it's gold, and uh, the wood You're is not- actually gold as well. 
You see, uh-huh. I, I I took the gold and I painted it the, the gold brown. That's how hardcore I am. Like they get the whole thing is solid gold. It weighs it weighs like 180 pounds. But is I painted the gold. You make it look you diamonds. Yeah, I know, well I'm strong as fuck. I bench press like 800 pounds. You gotta get, <laughs> oh. Damn. That makes perfect sense. All right. Yeah. yeah. So now it's all coming together. Yeah. And uh, well, wait a minute. This this begs the question: Is this now your most expensive gun? Um. Yes. It costs eighty four thousand dollars. Eighty four grand. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's how much it costs. It costs eighty four thousand dollars. Um. You know, no big deal. I mean, psh, I'm about to get a gold and bear it, and I'm going to shoot gold bullets out of it. So. So, so the question deal? is. To dip it in gold, right? Did you do this yourself, or did you buy it that way? Of course, way? I have a smelting room. <laughs> All right. So did you just take the go- the coins from your vault, dip the gun? Well, see, that's a different kind of gold. Those are doubloons that I have in my vault. <laughs> like, those are actually worth more than just pure gold. Because uh, how many ships uh, have you pillaged? They <laughs> have <laughs> Those actually have value for historical reasons. Yes, <laughs> yes, those are historically relevant. But, like, yeah, many a ship has been pillaged by the FPS uh, cruiser. You know, we go out. You know, <laughs> the SS FPS. Yes, I run, a, I, run a, I run a tight ship, a group of marauders, and, you know, from time to time we stumble upon a few, you know, a shipment of doubloons, some French gold, some German mm-hmm. na- Nazi I, I got. Balls. I got a question. How many times have you sat in the maritime, you know, waters with the FBI looking at you? Oh, not just the FBI. I mean, you know, satellites looking down at us all the time. Of course, we have our own satellites with laser beams on them. Like, I, I'm a big fan of Ronald Reagan, so I went ahead and put into effect the whole Star Wars program. You got the US like Space Cowboy do? satellites? You yes, I do. <laughs> Absolutely. It's like a six-shooter, but it shoots nukes. I think you should modify the AK to shoot diamonds. That'd be pretty cool. What do you think I'm shooting? <laughs> I guess I didn't look close enough. You gotta look close. <laughs> yeah. Those are diamonds hitting the ground, but it's okay. There's plenty of them out there already. Yeah, diamonds are not as rare as they make you think. No, not at all. I mean, they're laying all around my house. So well, was his whole page. My goodness. Uh, thank well, you guys. <laughs> this is everything I hoped it would be. <laughs> I just want to send a big shout out to uh, Jonas Halverson. I hope I'm pronouncing your name. My uh, my Swedish brother. Um, when Russia sweeps across your country like a curtain in the dark, dark a- night. You, my friend, will be made governor of all of Sweden, and you will be placed in a position of power for your lovely contributions toward my uh, golden AK-47. Now, here, here's the question. x did a vote on the uh, Road to Commander series. Has he ever did that? No, no, no. So here's the, here's the background on that. It was, so people don't realize it was actually – Wings was the, the guy who thought of the idea. Wings was the guy who said, you know what? I'd like to see x do a Road to Commander again. And uh, like it struck a chord with me, so I said it on the podcast, encouraged people to do it, and um, then XCOP put up a video and said, you know, hey, depending on how many likes this video gets, I'll do a Road to Commander series. And uh, the video got a lot of likes. I want to say it got over fifteen thousand likes, and he still didn't do his Road to Commander. And looking back, I don't know if he kind of played us and said, you know, he's just getting a lot of likes for a video, and it's, you know, got featured and stuff like that. Or if it really was a measure and 15,000 wasn't enough, I'm not sure. But even though I don't know XCAL, what I do know of XCAL is XCAL does what XCAL wants to do. And, uh, um, you know, he just must not have been into that kind of live comp. You know, so, so he didn't do it, and uh, Onslaught picked it up, and then Bender picked it up, and White Boy, and, you know, so many more. So, uh, so yeah, that's where it is. And, yeah, XCAL didn't do it because I don't think he wanted to. And that was that. Oh, I said that all along. He's not going to want to do that. Yep. Yeah, but he, he was willing to do very hard Fallout to New Vegas. You know, he loves that though. <laughs> it's like seriously. Oh man, on the first playthrough, no, you don't play very hard on the first play. You might do hard. I'm, I did yeah, hard I'm, on my first playthrough. Yeah, I'm doing hard on my Fallout Three, and that's my first time through Fallout Three, and. I've run into some tough spots. I guess if, if you have the right mindset, like basically all you got to do if you're going to play on hardcore is just stay on the road and don't get in over your head and you're good to go. Now, look, here's an open challenge to anybody watching the stream right now. I want to see, here's what I want to see, and I will I will put every video of it up on my channel. All right, Dragon Age, Golems Argamot. Oh, I can't fucking, I butchered that word. But the <sighs> DLC with the Golems, I want to see a character beat it on Nightmare creating a new character. No importing characters. If you can do that, I will put it up on my channel. That sounds... Dead serious. I don't know what any of that means, but it sounds really hard. Dude, it's it is... impossible, even. I'm not even going to try. Have you, you know, know what I'm talking about? Is. 
<laughs> Seamus, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, I think I played through it. It's been a while since I played, but... With the Harvester. God, I don't remember, the actually. The guy who spawns the skeletons? Well, it's, 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 uh, it's what's called premium DLC. It's supposed to be played after your character is done with the game and he's iced out. But they give you a choice to make another character with generic gear and level 20. And I had trouble beating this with my level 35 rogue archer that can do 400 damage a shot on Nightmare. Because you had to do it on Nightmare to get a challenge done. And then, (laughs) so basically you're taking 15 levels away from you because you're only going to level up once during the whole DLC. And then you got to beat this super hard monster. I want to see that. I think if I tried that, I'd just get really, really pissed off. You would. You're gonna get pissed and then off. I'd have and to you're send, die. A and then I'd have to send Woody's like an advice message, and then you'd have to read it. Something sound <laughs> like that. Right? He'd well, be look like, here. "Look, I can't beat Zork," and I'm uh, feeling depressed. That's how it would Wings go down. told me to do this, and now I'm just pissed off out of my mind. Let me let me go and lay the <laughs> rules down. I'm not gonna put videos up of you trying. I want you to record it with live commentary, and I want you to do it. And if you can do it on Nightmare with a brand new warden, a Elysian warden, don't care what class, I will put the entire thing up on my channel. All right. All right. So that was it. Pink That's already. a challenge to the world. Episode 37. <laughs> <laughs> Wings has just challenged the world to do something really nerdy in Dragon's Age that I don't understand. <laughs> oh, you, you, oh, my God, dude. You'd have to play this shit. Peace, guys. Later. All right. See you.